glad to have you with us inside the University of Phoenix Stadium as we get set for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Reese Davis and Jesse Palmer here. And Jesse, these are two teams ranked third and fourth in the country. Huge matchup between two programs that prior to last year had a combined three 10-win seasons between them now back-to-back 11-win -back campaigns and close to playing for the national title. Two great teams and two great stories. When you look at Oklahoma State playing in their first major bowl game since 1946, they had to overcome multiple off-the-field distractions to get to this point here tonight. They're a double overtime loss on the road at Iowa State from playing in the BCS National Championship game. Meanwhile, Stanford, a year ago, 11 wins during the regular season, played in the Orange Bowl under Jim Harbaugh. He goes off to the NFL. They are, here they are back again. Big time bowl game, another 11 win season. David Shaw, first year at head coach, and of course they're led by the Heisman Trophy runner-up in Andrew Luck. You could not ask for a bigger matchup. I, I know you couldn't tell, but just as you were talking, the tree, the Stanford <laughs> tree was dancing right over your shoulder, and the Stanford band is also entertaining the people. Now, while Andrew Luck might be regarded as Mr. Perfect, the guys in the Stanford band and the, and the girls in the Stanford band, a little more along the lines of, um, Mr. and Mrs. Irreverent, perhaps. <laughs> they say fear the tree, and the tree will have its work cut out for it tonight. Stanford against Oklahoma State. And this Oklahoma State team, uh, just as luck is ending his career at Stanford, Justin Blackman doing the same for Oklahoma State. Jesse, he's won back-to-back -back Bolitnikoff yeah. awards as the nation's best receiver. Justin Blackman is the real deal at wide receiver. When you look at his ability to run routes, his ability to catch the football, and what he's able to do with the football after he has it in his hands, he is the type of wide receiver that commands the football. If you need an example, go back and look at the Iowa State game against Leonard Johnson, a very good cornerback bump man-to-man -man coverage at the line of scrimmage. Watch Blackman snap his head back to locate the football, and then the freakish athletic ability leaping up into the air, able to pluck the football out of midair, and he's so strong through the catch, very, very difficult to bring down once he has the football in his hands. Now, Justin Blackman's role has really changed this season. He's much more of a possession receiver than a big play deep ball receiver like he was last year, but the productivity has not changed. Now, in tonight's game, you are not gonna see Stanford press Justin Blackman, bump and run at the line of scrimmage. They're going to try and mix up their coverages. They'll double cover him. They'll try and bracket him, limit his touches. They know they can't stop Justin Blackman. They're just gonna try and contain him. Stanford has not allowed a 100 yard receiver all year, but Oklahoma State has myriad weapons. Their average scoring drive, touchdown drives, lasted less than two minutes. They have 22 touchdown drives of a minute or less this year. And look at these ranks. In the top three, passing, total offense, scoring, and the big plays. Though, as Jesse mentioned, Blackman only has eight receptions of 20 yards or more. Now, when you look at this Oklahoma State offense, specific to the matchup with Stanford's defense, what do you expect to see the Cowboys try to do tonight? I was talking to Oklahoma State offensive coordinator Todd Munkin on the field here just a few minutes ago. They understand that Stanford is a very physical defense. They like to play downhill. They like to get in the box and try and stop the run. I think Oklahoma State in this game is going to try and spread the field a little bit and put a lot of stress on these defenders to make tackles in open space. They're going to move Justin Blackman around formationally, try and get the football out of Brandon Wheaton's hands early. It is critical in this game that Oklahoma Oklahoma State is able to establish the running game out of spread formations with Joseph Randall, a guy right now that's averaging 99 rushing yards per game. If they can get an extra defender to commit into the box, a seventh, eighth defender from Stanford, then that opens up some of these one-on-one -on -one opportunities outside of the field to Justin Blackman, Tracy Moore, some of these other big playmakers Oklahoma State has in the passing game. And there's where Brandon Whedon, the 28-year-old quarterback, thrives. It seems that Andrew Luck is a guy who can thrive in just about any situation. In his three years as a starter, Luck has won 31 games. It's the most win by any Stanford quarterback. And they've had some good ones, guys like Elway and Plunkett on the list. Andrew Luck is a special player, and certainly when you look at his statistics and you look at his accomplishments, it's very, very impressive. But what's so special to me about Andrew Luck is all the intangibles that he possesses. And I've always been so impressed with the control that Andrew Luck has of this Stanford offense. You know, there's a lot of things they do formationally. There's a lot of things they do with audibles at the line of scrimmage that some NFL teams don't even do. And for stretches this season, 
This coaching staff has allowed Andrew Luck to actually call his own plays. That is unheard of at the collegiate level. He is a very special player. There's a reason many people believe he'll be the number one overall pick in next year's upcoming NFL draft. I think we're lucky, we're all lucky have a chance to watch him play here in his final collegiate game. You know, you see all these offenses looking to the sideline for guidance. <laughs> Not him. A Andrew just looks inside his own brain, and it's worked out pretty well, though he has thrown an interception in five straight games against a defense built on taking the ball away. David Shaw, who's the head coach, or officially the Bradford M. Freeman director of football for Stanford, <laughs> knows that Luck has to take care of the ball. He spoke with Heather Cox a little while ago. Reese, thanks so much. Coach Shaw, tonight is Andrew Luck's final game in a Stanford jersey. He told me he doesn't think he's going to be emotional, but how would you describe your emotions? You know, we're very similar in that respect. We're not very nostalgic guys, and uh, we're not those guys that tear up and hug and all that stuff. And we've been so geared on, on game preparation that I'm sure it'll come uh, pretty hard after the game, but right now we've got a great game to play. And Oklahoma State has a very impressive quarterback of its own. What does your defense need to do to slow down Brandon Weeder? Well, you said it. When we talk about slowing him down, we don't talk about stopping him and shutting him out and all that stuff. We just want to make sure we give ourselves a chance to win, try not to give up the big play, uh, and realize if we can get to the quarterback a couple times, uh, whether we sack him or not, make sure we bounce him around a little bit, hopefully maybe force an errant throw here or there. Uh, but besides that, we don't want to give up the big play. We've got to try and outscore him. Coach Shaw, thank you. We're looking forward to it. Reese, yeah. back to you. Heather, David, thank you very much. So we're just about set in just a few moments to kick this off. We talked about what Oklahoma State would try on offense. What will Stanford try to accomplish tonight? We know that Stanford is a run first team. We all talk about Andrew Luck and for good reason, but this team is establishing the line of scrimmage with authority and physicality. They're a team right now that's averaging 210 rushing yards per game. It's imperative they get that established early. And it'll be interesting to see in this game if they try and use the play action passing game early try and set up some of this running game, find out how Oklahoma State defensively is going to try and stop them. David Shaw told me this week he has been harping on Andrew Luck not to take chances throwing the football against this Oklahoma State defense. 42 takeaways on the year. That's most in the nation. When he's throwing the football over the middle of the field, be that off of play action or third down, he's got to be smart with his decision making. Huge for the perception of both programs. Stanford yeah. that it has some staying power. Oklahoma State still stinging from not being in the national championship game. Old Pistol Pete wants to make sure he's not firing blanks against Luck and the Cardinal tonight. Just about set to go from Glendale. Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, and Heather Cox will have the call of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Stanford and Oklahoma State coming up just a few. Look inside Nissan's Heisman House. Welcome to the Nissan pregame shift. Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy and the Bowl Championship Series. And we welcome you back live to University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl for just the third time in the BCS era dating back to 1998. It's a three versus four matchup as Oklahoma State takes on Stanford. David Shaw ready to lead his Stanford Cardinal onto the field. The Cardinal 11 and 1 in Shaw's first season as head coach, making their third BCS bowl game appearance, their second in a row. One year ago, they defeated Virginia Tech in the Discover Orange Bowl. Stanford with its only loss at home against Oregon.
And playing in a bowl game this year closer to home. Many more fans of the Cardinal in attendance tonight for this BCS bowl appearance. of their Big 12 championship, their first conference title since 1976. Like Stanford, Oklahoma State also 11 and 1, their only loss in double overtime at Iowa State. You've been watching the Nissan pregame shift. Spread, smash, tempo, muscle. Opposites don't attract, they compete. Each with one loss. Each with one chance. For luck. For Blackman. For one final time. For Cardinal. For Cowboy. Styles don't just make fights. Tonight, they make a fiesta. Start the party. And what a party this should be as number four Stanford takes on third-ranked Oklahoma State in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. They are two teams with contrasting styles, but they also have much in common, including plenty of offensive firepower generated by some of the greatest players in college football today. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Matt Millen. We'll be joined again by Heather Cox in just a moment. Delighted to have you with us. As Stanford coach David Shaw says, these are two teams that each believe they are the best team in the country. They won't have a chance to play for the national championship, but they have a chance to make a big point tonight and perhaps create the prospect of a split national championship about a week from now. Of course, that's putting the cart way ahead of the horse. But what we do have here tonight on center stage two of the highest scoring teams in the country. They do it different ways in the case of Oklahoma State, the highest scoring team in the country at 49 points per game. You know, Sean, stylistically, they do do it differently, but there are a lot of similarities. What they really like to do offensively is all about numbers, and that is to say, how do you defend them? And when you look at this Oklahoma State team, they try to spread you out and see where all the numbers are coming from first. And then once they've decided that, then they go to work. Who goes to work? It's Brandon Whedon, the quarterback, and who he likes to get right there, that little circle, that's Justin Blackman. Anytime you give him single coverage on the outside, they're going to him. That's phase one. Phase two is in the run game, and they're counting numbers on the inside. And once you get a light box, and they believe they can handle it, you see they're going to run to the lesser side of the numbers in the box. And here there's three. They're going to go to the three side. They have the advantage. Tell you, Brandon Whedon is really good at controlling this offense and the numbers. Welcome those of you who just watched the Rose Bowl, Oregon's victory over Wisconsin. We welcome you to University of Phoenix Stadium for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, number four, Stanford, number three, Oklahoma State. For the audience that was just with us, we just start talking about Oklahoma State, the highest scoring team in the country. They like to do it with that spread offense and the fast tempo. In the case of Stanford, you'd think with Andrew Luck, perhaps a once-in-a-generation quarterback, they'd be first and foremost a passing team, but they're not. No, they really aren't. When you watch the Stanford Cardinal football team, it's about the run game. Now, again, Andrew Luck, he can beat you with his brain, his arm, and his feet. 
He's rare, and he does it very, very well. But what they like to do first and foremost is they want to run the football first. They'll get into what they call the Hulk formation. You're going to see that tonight at different times, and we'll point it out. What the Hulk formation is, real simple. They get seven offensive linemen in there. They generally have two tight ends, and it's power football. And they force you as a defense to be able to bring your numbers in, and you declare how you're going to defend against this offense. They'll pound the football. They like to run into numbers. And then once you do declare and you get everybody up inside, then that's when Luck goes to goes to bat with the second part of his game, which is the pass game. They love the play action. They go to it often. This is a clash of styles, but a lot of similarities. Sean, this one should be a real humdinger. Indeed it should. Oklahoma State so narrowly missing a chance to play in the All-State BCS National Championship game by nine one thousandth of a point. The narrowest margin ever between two and three. And down on the field is the Oklahoma State coach Mike Gundy with Heather Cox. Sean thanks so much coach you came within a fraction of playing for the BCS championship. How motivated is this group to prove it's a national championship caliber team. Well our team was really excited about playing in this game and having a quality opponent like Stanford and playing against luck really helped motivate the guys. Your star Justin Blackman has been battling an inner thigh infection that's limited his mobility and playing time. After watching him warm up how concerned are you about how effective he can be. I think he's going to be fine. Justin plays through a lot of pain. He's done it for a couple three years. I don't think he's in that much pain right now. We're going to find out really soon but I accept him to play very well. Coach thanks so much. Enjoy every minute of tonight. Thank you. Sean. What a job Mike Gundy has done in his seven years at his alma mater was a star quarterback back in the late 80s when Barry Sanders was a teammate 18 and 19 as the head coach after three seasons but he's built them into one of the best teams in the country and across the field David Shaw was the ninth coach in the history of major college football to win 11 games or more in his first season as a head coach. 11 and 1 matching their regular season record of a year ago under Jim Harbaugh. If they could get that 12th win as they did a year ago, they'd match the school record set last year. Andrew Luck playing in his final game for Stanford. He is a junior, but he will not be returning to the farm. Oklahoma State won the toss and interestingly has deferred. A lot of concern. Among some Cowboy fans about the defense ranked 106 in the country, but Mike Gundy is going to put the Cowboy defense on the field first. Quinn Sharp will kick off best in the nation for the third year in a row, leading the country in touchbacks, 56 of them this year. And of course, he kicks off a lot because they score a lot. Other than the national championship game, this is the most anticipated game of this bowl season, and the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl is underway with the customary boomer off the foot of the junior Quinn Sharp, down by Ty Montgomery. So here comes Stanford, led by the brilliant Andrew Luck, Jr. from Houston, Texas. Runner up in the Heisman Trophy balloting for the second year in a row, a year ago to Cam Newton this year to Robert Griffin the third. He was the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year for the second year in a row. 70% completions, 35 touchdowns. 31 and 8 as the Stanford starting quarterback. Most wins among starting quarterbacks in Stanford history. And they've had some great ones like John Elway and Jim Plunkett. They open as you might expect in a power formation. But they might try to hit a home run early. Stefan Taylor straight ahead. And he got four. He's a 1,000 yard rusher for Andrew Luck and the Cardinal. When you watch Andrew Luck, it's easy to get a little bit bored with what he does. He's so efficient. He actually bores you with completions and efficiency. What he does so well, Sean, that goes unnoticed, is the work he does pre-snap at the line of scrimmage. He puts his team in the right play virtually all the time. Graduated with a 3.5 GPA. Back to pass he goes and looking for that home run ball, but it was well covered deep. 
And he runs, and he is an effective runner, and he paid the price for it at the 29-yard line, a yard short of the first down. Justin Gilbert and Alex Elkins combined to put a pretty good pop on Andrew Luck. Well, he did take a shot at the end of this. You can see him kind of get held up, so he can't really lower his shoulder. They're not afraid to hit him. One of the things you have to do when a quarterback takes off and runs, you got to let him know there's a price to be paid. They did just that. Luck ran for 153 yards in the regular season. They wanted to take a deep shot, but it was covered. Now look at how tight this formation is on third down and one. Ryan Hewitt, the fullback, gets the call. There's a flag down. If the play stands, he got the first down. Tom Ritter is the referee. It's a Southeastern Conference officiating crew. Offside. Defense number 99. Five yard penalty. The yardage results in the first down. Rochetti Jones offside. There's Bill Young, the defensive coordinator, is alongside Mike Gundy on the sideline. Sean, in playing this game defensively, you've got to be able to match patience for patience. This is a very patient Stanford football team that's running the football. On first and ten, Stephon Taylor bounces outside. Lots of running room. One man can catch it and did. Daytuan Lowe saved the touchdown. All the way to the 28-yard line went Taylor with a 38-yard run. You always think power football is going to be run inside, but you have to be able to handle the edge, and they do not get it done. This is very well blocked by Stanford, allows Taylor to get to the edge. Nice angle by Daytuan Lowe to be able to run this down. Really well done inside. David DeCastro on the kick out, and he's able to get the edge. Well, two All-Americans on that offensive line, the left tackle, Jonathan Martin, and the right guard, David DeCastro, leading the way for Stephon Taylor. Luck faked it to him, pressured immediately, throws it up for grabs, and it is incomplete. Intended for Jeff Mikan, a fullback, and Daytuan Lowe had the coverage. They got pressure, and that really is the difference of the play because he had to hang this ball up just a little bit, but he also had Kobe Fleener running underneath and Toilolo on the other side wide open. That could have been a great catch and a second big play by Daytuan Lowe. Lowe is their leading tackler for the season, the free safety. Second and 10. Tyler Gaffney is now in at tailback. They'll use four, we expect, tonight. Gaffney is also an outfielder on the Stanford baseball team. Got three to the 25. It'll be third and seven. As we look at tonight's impact players, some of them for Stanford, including Locke, Taylor, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Cleaner, part of a three-headed monster at tight end. He averages 20 yards per catch and has scored 10 touchdowns. And when they're on defense, Chase Thomas pursues the quarterbacks from his linebacker position. He led the Pac-12 in tackles for loss in the second and sacks. There's Fleener. Great target at 6'6", 254. They like to look for him in this part of the field. Third and seven. Four-man rush. Luck dumps it off for Griff Whalen, and he's well short of the first down. They're going to spot it at the 23-yard line. Markel Martin made the tackle. Shetty Jones with some pressure on Luck. They are about five yards short of the first down, so the field goal team comes on for Stanford. Bill Young, their defensive coordinator, decides to roll the bones a little bit there in that third down, knowing that if he can bring pressure and force a quick throw, it has to be underneath, and then they can make the tackle. And it was well executed. Jordan Williamson's had a good year. Second team. All pack 12. 41 yard field goal try. And it is no good. Just wide to the right. Sean, one of the things that the Stanford team thought they had to do 
was drive the football, hold on to the ball, but they could not afford to just get field goals. They need to had to punctuate the drives with six points. And in this particular instance, they get nothing. Williamson thought he had it. Remember, if it's over the top of the bar, it's no good. It has to clearly be inside. So here's Oklahoma State, highest scoring team in the nation on offense, and Brandon Whedon throws an interception on their first play from scrimmage. Picked off by Terrence Brown. Terrence Brown played this extremely well. He gave up the underneath, and he continued to sink in his coverage. Watch him. He's just going to keep on getting depth. That is, you could not have played that more perfectly. Blackman was trying to settle in between the safety over top and the corner, but Brown did a beautiful job of just sinking with the coverage and played it well. His first interception of the year, Stanford has had now just seven interceptions on the season, a very low total. They have the ball right back at the 38-yard line. Luck handed it off to Taylor. And a hard-earned yard for Stephon Taylor, junior from Mansfield, Texas. The only other rushers in Stanford history to have back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons are two standouts, Darren Nelson and Toby Gerhardt. You know, when they're going to try to run this edge, there's a guy on the outside right there, number 19, Broderick Brown. Only five foot eight. He's a bulldog. That guy is a player. He will take big players and play them even, and he'll be physical as you can be physical. He is a pleasure to watch. A lot of discrepancy about his height. <laughs> he tells his teammates he's six feet tall. Bill Young told us yesterday he's actually 5'2". <laughs> he's a legit 5'8". Plays yeah, like he's about six it. foot. Luck on second and nine in the flat, and you can see that hit coming. Ty Montgomery got his helmet knocked off by the hard-hitting Markel Martin. Nice play. Nice hit. All clean. He's running right through that thing. Now, he reads this, the same thing that Luck reads it. And here he comes. Now, that's not helmet to helmet. He hit him actually upper body. Well played. Markel Martin, you're going to watch. He's going to turn up field, Montgomery. A watch. Well, that looks helmet to helmet to me. Yeah. I like it. As you always do <laughs> when you side with the defense. Fortunately, it looks like Montgomery's all right. A timeout called with third down and seven upcoming. No score just underway in Glendale, Arizona. Welcome you back to ESPN's presentation of the 2012 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Sean, I wanted to take another look at this, and there are a couple pieces of this. First of all, he didn't launch himself. He tried to run through. Mm -hmm. And secondly, Montgomery, at one point, he goes from being a receiver to a runner. And admittedly, it's close, but that's good, tough physical football. Good non-call, in my opinion. Man, a big play here. Stanford trying to capitalize on the turnover on the first play from scrimmage from Oklahoma State. Tyler Gaffney went out in motion to the right. Leaving Luck all by himself in the shotgun. Four-man rush, and they get to Luck. It's Rashetti Jones again pulling him down back at the 43. Nice job by Bill Young, the defensive coordinator. He shows three initially, and then Sean, off the left side, he brings two more. And effectively, because you have five receivers out, it's five on five. Rashetti Jones beats the numbers. You're going to watch Lewis, 11, coming off the one side. And then Jones back up inside. He beats Yankee, and because of the coverage, he had to pull that thing down, and you get the sack. Loss of eight on the play. David Green punts. Josh Cooper fielded it and brought it back to the 14-yard line. Jarek Lancaster made the tackle for Stanford. So the Oklahoma State defense rose to the occasion, covering up the miscue by Brandon Whedon. ESPN College Football, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, is brought to you by 
Tostitos. Tostitos knows how to party. Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. Taco Bell, think outside the bus. And DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. And some of the great views of tonight's game are courtesy of the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. Natural grass field inside this dome stadium, and it looks to be in great shape. It was a concern given the Arizona Cardinals played a game in here yesterday, an overtime win over Seattle. No score. Oklahoma State on offense for the second time. They had just one play on their first possession, and Brandon Whedon threw an interception. This time it's a delay to Joseph Randall, their leading rusher. He got a yard to the 15, tackled by Matt Masafilo. Whedon, senior from Edmond, Oklahoma, tremendously accurate. All of those marks are school records. The yardage mark and the single season touchdown mark are records that he had that he said a year ago and broke this year. He's 28 years old. Gave it to Randall again. He's ahead for another yard. Chase Thomas and Matt Masafilo made the tackle. And it'll be third down and eight for Oklahoma State playing it conservatively here deep in their own territory after the early problem. Four-man rush from Stanford. The check down is complete. And Isaiah Anderson's driven back from the 20-yard line, way short of a first down. But wouldn't you know, with these two high-scoring teams and all the talent on the offensive side of the ball, the defenses have been the story so far. And, Sean, that's exactly what you said at the top of the show. You have all this offensive firepower, and really, it's strength versus weakness on both sides, but it's the weakness who is stronger is the team that will prevail. Win sharp punts. Oh, boy, this is a bomb to Drew Terrell, and he is smothered immediately. Great coverage by Justin Gilbert. And the ball be marked at the 31 after a 50-yard punt. Well, Mike Gundy put his defense on the field first when he had the choice, and they backed up his faith. Oklahoma State's defense done an excellent job so far. The offense has done nothing. Bill Young's group coming off an outstanding performance in their win over Oklahoma in the Bedlam game to end the regular season. It's already forced one three and out from Stanford tonight. They had only 13 the entire regular season. He was three and outs on offense in the country. Anthony Wilkerson is the tailback, and he gets the handoff from Luck on the delay, and he's dropped. For a one-yard loss. Back to the 30-yard line. Sean Lewis and Nigel Nicholas combined to make the play. The interior of this defense for Oklahoma State, they're not very big. They can be active. And when Nigel Nicholas is, when he's on, he's, he's a powerful guy inside. When he gets his hands inside of a guy and sinks his hips, he's pretty darn good. And missing another defensive tackle a starter Christian Littlehead suspended for this game Anthony Rogers 94 got the start and he's played a lot at that position this year Stefan Taylor got the yard back it'll be third and ten much has been made about the rankings 107th in total defense 103rd against the pass but Bill Young has plenty of good reasons to not be tremendously concerned he said sure we wish the numbers were better but we play with an offense that scores very quickly. We're back out the, on the field quickly. In fact, they've defended more plays than any team in the country. 1,008. By comparison, the number one defense in the country, Alabama, has defended 332 fewer plays this year. And the Oklahoma State leads the country, the defense, in takeaways with 42. Luck throws, caught, first down. Out to the 42-yard line. Zach Ertz, part of that 
Outstanding trio of tight ends. He's a sophomore from Danville, California. And what he does very well is he understands that it's his own, knows where the sticks are, and sits right in the hole. That time, Sean, they rushed three, and they dropped eight defenders. And so the holes in those zones are a little smaller. Ertz does a nice job. 24th catch, and he missed three games with a knee injury. Stephon Taylor powering ahead. Tough run to the 47, almost the 48-yard line before Cooper Bassett and Markel Martin got him on the grass. John, remember earlier we talked about as a defense when you play the Stanford team, you have got to be able to match patience with patience. Stanford is going to run the foot. They're going to do what they do. And what they try to do is try to get you to make a mistake. Take a chance. Maybe play a guy a little bit differently one time. And that's, and that's when they beat you. Just under 55% of their plays from scrimmage are runs. Fake to Taylor. Luck given time. He has a man wide open. It is caught. Touchdown, Ty Montgomery. There's the mistake. Neil Maddow was talking to Pep Hamilton, the offensive coordinator, before the game. He said, all week long, we've been reading comments from the Oklahoma State people saying, Stanford is run, 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 and then try to throw it over your head. He said, well, we might try to throw it over their head a lot earlier than they expect, and they just did. 53 yards and a touchdown, and the lead for the Cardinal. And the extra point good by Jordan Williamson. Andrew Luck's 36th touchdown pass of the season. Having a five-play, 69-yard drive. The touchdown catch for Montgomery, just his second of the year. It's a rare home run ball for Andrew Luck to a wide receiver entering tonight's game 14 of Stanford's longest 20 longest pass plays this season have gone to tight ends. They just don't have a lot of speed at the outside receiver. Two of the other six were trick plays flea flicker type plays to get it to a wide receiver. Montgomery does have speed and used it to score a 53 yard touchdown. They lost Chris Awusu for much of the year with a couple of concussions. He was their big play maker at wideout. Williamson kicks off. About four yards deep in the end zone. Justin Gilbert. Four kickoff returns for touchdowns in his career. And he got taken down at the 30-yard line. Let's take a look at tonight's Taco Bell touchdown spotlight. John, remember we talked about who's going to make the, who's going to make the mistake. Here's a mistake, here's a mistake. But they're not alone. Right there, everybody bites on the inside. And I want you to watch the receiver. He does a nice job of running at the corner to fake that he's gonna block him. Everybody bites. And then he gets on top of it. And remember, it's play action pass, which brings you an extra blocker inside. Well protected, ball's right where it has to be, and it's six points. Let's see if Oklahoma State can get its offense going. They've turned it over once. Pass incomplete. Look like they're trying to set up a screen to Joseph Randall. It'll be second down and ten. Just more than four minutes left in the first quarter. And Oklahoma State has not had the first down. This is their third possession of the football game. A turnover and a punt. Whedon down the field. Caught. There's the first down to Josh Cooper. His 65th catch of the season. Sean, that guy right there, Cooper, to me, he's the X factor for this passing game. You know what Blackman can do, but Cooper is the guy people forget about, and he's the guy who moves the chains. 14-yard gain. Line of scrimmage, the 44. Pressure off the corner, and the pass incomplete again intended for Cooper. And broken up by A.J. Tarpley. An inside linebacker, redshirt freshman from Plymouth, Minnesota, coming off a terrific performance in their season-ending win, regular season finale against Notre Dame. And not only Notre Dame, he got better as the season went on, particularly in the pass game, and you saw it there. He's, he's gotten a little bit of patience in the pass game, and he uses it well. 
They go quickly as they usually do. Whedon throws, caught, three yard gain. Just shy of the 50 yard line, it's Isaiah Anderson. Tackled by Johnson Batamosi, a cornerback. Third down and four. Nice job of substituting by the Stanford bench. They get another DB in. It's going to be hard to substitute against this up tempo Oklahoma State attack. They bring five, but it was a slow rush, and the pass is incomplete. Not a well thrown ball by Isaiah Anderson. And when you talk about the strengths of Brandon Whedon, Matt, the top thing on the list is accuracy, and he's a little bit off his game in that regard. A little bit off because the coverage was there. They were going to try to hit the wheel route. You're going to watch the receiver, Randall, go on top, and they took it away. Batamosi took it away, and he forced him to pull that thing back down, and then he tried to hit this inside. But you're right, Sean, a little bit high on that one. Quinn Sharp punts again. Almost scraped the ceiling. Here at the University of Phoenix Stadium, and they couldn't down it. It landed at the two and hopped into the end zone. Another 50-yard punt for Sharp, but a net of just 30. Tomorrow night at 8 Eastern on ESPN, don't miss the All-State Sugar Bowl from New Orleans. Denard Robinson and the Michigan Wolverines back in a BCS Bowl for the first time since 2007. They're taking on David Wilson, the outstanding running back and the Virginia Tech Pokies. Making their 19th straight bowl appearance under Frank Beamers. The All-State Sugar Bowl on ESPN, ESPN Radio, ESPN3. Also streaming live at WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. All tomorrow night, 8 Eastern time. Logan Thomas in that game will be an X Factor. He's a big man who has gotten better as the season's gone on. He's the quarterback for Virginia Tech. They hand it off to the fullback, Jeff Minkin. And he stopped immediately. Anthony Rogers with help from James Thomas. Sean, on that last one when they gave up the touchdown, if they went to the sideline, I'll guarantee you what Bill Young was telling his defense. Read your keys. Your keys never lie. And you have to stay on them, particularly those safeties. Safeties are very integral in this game, particularly in this game. Because of the run game, you want to come down and make the tackle but you have to make sure you see your key first. You don't want one thrown over your head, as has already happened. Luck, four-man rush from the Cowboys, and the catch made by Kobe Fleener. First team all-pack 12 tight end, 26-yard line, and there is a flag on the play. Caleb Levy made the stop for Oklahoma State. An illegal touching on the offense. Number 82 was not on the end of the line. Five yard penalty. Second down. Well, it's amazing that doesn't happen more often with the strange formations that Stanford throws at you. You can't have more than five, uh, four rather, in the backfield. If he wasn't on the line of scrimmage, and he was in the back. That, that one, that one would mess me up a little bit, unless somebody else was out there. <laughs> I don't know how they punctuated the end of the line. And they came back to the 16, second and 14, and another tough run by Stefan Taylor. Up near the 28. And the third down to about two and a half as we're under two minutes to go in the first quarter. Stanford leading Oklahoma State 7-0. Just power football. They're going to just run right inside, and then you got to run. This is called running behind your pads, and he doesn't give up. Keeps the feet churning and the legs pumping. Trying to go back to the penalty on Fleeners because there was somebody who covered him up on the end line. They're an outstanding third down team, 52%, so often in short yardage because of the effective run game on early downs. <laughs> Oklahoma State tried to bring pressure, and it is intercepted. Officials conferring, yes, now they say it is a pick for Justin Gilbert. That is really well done by Justin Gilbert. The read for Luck is the corner underneath. If he bites on the underneath route, you throw it to the guy over the top. Gilbert read it perfectly. He saw the same thing that Luck saw, and he took a chance and undercut it. Watch, there's the bite underneath. Now throw it over the top. 
He's going to go to Fleener, but Gilbert does a really nice job of seeing the same thing. Got both feet in bounds as it turned out. Had possession all the way. Fifth interception of the year for Gilbert. And the 43rd takeaway this season for Oklahoma State, adding to the national lead. Whedon under duress. Got it off very short to Josh Cooper. Smothered immediately by Michael Thomas, senior safety and a co-captain, along with Andrew Luck. Sean, I am really impressed with both these defenses. They are aggressive. They are in coverage. We've not mentioned Justin Blackman at all. He's been covered down below the whole time. Really well done out there by Terrence Brown. Whedon, plenty of time this time, and throws short of Isaiah Anderson. Here's Heather Cox. Sean, as I mentioned with Coach Gundy before the game, Justin Blackman is battling an infection on his inner thigh. It's limited his mobility this week. I talked to athletic trainer Ken Blasky. He told me he's been on heavy antibiotics and anti-inflammatories, told to stay in bed because it's made him very sore and lethargic. You'll notice they haven't gone to him. He didn't warm up very much, and he's practiced very little all week. They kept, kept that covered up, but Blackman has not participated in very, very many drills. They go short on third down to Joseph Randall, and he got taken down immediately by Jarek Lancaster. Their leading tackler for the year did a nice job stepping in for the outstanding linebacker Shane Skold, who was injured in the third game of the year and missed the rest of the season. That'll be the last play of the first quarter. Great defense, Sean. This has been a quarter of good defense on both sides. Oklahoma State and Stanford. Only 27 yards of offense for Oklahoma State. A team that averages 557 per game. Welcome back to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, University of Phoenix Stadium, Glendale, Arizona. After one quarter, Stanford leading Oklahoma State. Seven to nothing and frustration evident in Justin Blackman on the Oklahoma State sideline. Yeah, but you know what else you see there, Sean? You see a motivated guy. He wants the ball. When great players get involved like that, particularly with emotion, you get you start feeding them. Quinn Sharp hangs it high in the air and a fair catch made by Drew Terrell at the 13-yard line. Here comes. Stanford again Andrew Luck had the defense come to his aid after he threw an interception He's thrown an interception now in six straight games of course he was the Heisman Trophy favorite for much of the year and got passed late in the season by Robert Griffin the third David Shaw the Stanford coach had no disrespect to Griffin because he had a tremendous year he said but the slowest wide receiver for Baylor would be the fastest wide receiver on the Stanford team. Yeah, you have to kind of look around and look at the whole picture. Here's here's a look at this right now. See this? You got seven offensive linemen. This is their Hulk formation we were talking about at the start. They're just going to go power on power, force you to have to adjust. Stanford coaches were so disappointed that two years in a row luck did not win the Heisman. Stephon Taylor runs for about four. We talked to Pep Hamilton, the offensive coordinator, yesterday, and he seemed to be blaming himself, Matt. He said, I wish I had done more to help Andrew Luck win the stat war because when you compared stats to stats, Luck to Griffin, Griffin had the much bigger numbers, but it's a much different offensive philosophy. Yeah, not even close. And, and But their main concern wasn't necessarily the stats, and Andrew Luck would be the first to tell you, he wants wins. That's what he wants first and foremost. And the best way for them to win is to run. He's all for it. Second and seven. Luck appears to be changing the play as he does very often. They usually have three options when he comes to the line of scrimmage. In terms of what's called in the huddle. Threw it off to Stefan Taylor. He's very near a first down across the 23. Has it first and 10. Sean Lewis ran him out. And here are the passing numbers. The comparison and more than 800 passing yards for Robert Griffin the third. You know we had the pleasure of covering both these players. Of course Robert Griffin the third won the Heisman Trophy. But let me say take those numbers away. 
and take just look at their character and they might be two of the best character people in all of football that is that is you couldn't say more about them as people no doubt about it both incredibly high character individuals Taylor again boy he's running hard fighting for every inch out to the 28 yard line run down by Markel Martin you know when you're a safety the one thing you have to be aware of you read your keys and then it's about angles because you can't give up the inside take the inside out see how he does that and by position you take away the inside and you force him one way to go well done by Markel Martin who really Sean has come on as the season has gone on he stumbled a little bit with his play early in the season but at the end of the season he was playing very well he's come on in many ways as his career has gone on he didn't even make the bowl trip his freshman year had academic issues this year he won the team's academic achievement award on his way Jeremy Stewart the fourth tailback to carry the ball tonight for Stanford watch 82 Kobe Fleener this is called setting the edge you're going to get him and he's going to come back down inside you're going to see here's Fleener right here he's going to set this edge right there takes the safety back down inside there's no force you eliminate the force nice block inside also and then he's on the edge 34 yard run for Jeremy Stewart fifth year senior from Baton Rouge with help on the corner from Fleener longest run of the year for Stewart luck under center now with three men in the backfield Gaffney spins down to the 35 wrapped up by Anthony Rogers they're so methodical Sean they'll try first they tried punching you in the stomach early they tried to go inside okay you took that away now we're going to get to the edge we're going to force you to have to defend the edge because we're going to try to set it and then once you start flowing that's when they'll read those backers from the inside out and if you flow fast they start cutting it back we talked to bill young yesterday matt he said we talked to a lot of coaching staff that played stanford and they all said the same thing you're going to watch them on tape and you're going to be underwhelmed and then exactly. you're going to get out on the field and you're going to think, wow, these guys are really good. Luck throws, first down. Gaffney breaks a tackle, breaks another, and is finally down at the 19. Anthony Rogers, the defensive tackle, had to hustle downfield to stop him after a pickup of 16. You know what they do they're just gonna they're using the guys down the field to draw coverage off and then he's dumping it back underneath and he'll force you again in the pass game they're gonna force you to be patient and they're gonna want you to get to back off and he'll throw it back underneath and then when you take a bite underneath that's when he'll hit it over the top Stanford methodically on the move as is their custom first and ten at the Oklahoma State 19 Taylor back in there. There was movement before the snap. <laughs> nice hit by Dayton Lowe at the end of that thing, though. I don't think the players heard the whistles. False start. 94 offense. Five yard penalty remains. First down. And they've had a lot of problems with penalties lately. They had 11 penalties in the last regular season game against Notre Dame and seven and they went against Cal. And that's Dayton Lowe again with a really nice hit on Taylor. Of course, it never happened because the whistle happened. It's a freebie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no play. There's no helmet to helmet. There's no flag. Seven first downs for Stanford. Still just one for Oklahoma State. On the draw. Jeremy Stewart great cut another great cut and a touchdown for Stanford John, sometimes you have to lose one for the Gipper and the fullback this time just gets blown up watch this right here he loses one for the Gipper what he does though is effectively takes him out and then Stewart is to second level and like you said nice vision it's one thing to see it it's another thing to get there and he did just that 
Jordan Williamson adds the extra point. It has been all Stanford. Jeremy Stewart, ninth rushing touchdown of his senior season. Capping an 87-yard drive that took four and a half minutes and seven plays. Back here at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Stanford leads 14 to nothing. Big plays from the Cardinal, three long runs, most recently the 24-yard touchdown by Jeremy Stewart. They've had runs of 38 and 34 tonight. Their first touchdown was a pass play of 53 yards, luck to Montgomery. No rhythm on offense for Oklahoma State. They don't generally have the ball for very long, but they do typically do much more with it than they have tonight. Jordan Williamson kicks off. Spinning down to Josh Stewart, true freshman. In trouble and just did reach the 16-yard line. Well covered by the special teams coached by Brian Polian. This is really well done, Jeremy Stewart. Look, Hewitt gets blown up by Johnson right there, but he provides him some space. Now, there's one thing to see it. There's another thing to get your body there. And that on Broderick Brown is really well done. And then at the end of this, another nice cut back inside. I remember talking to Barry Sanders one time, and I said, Barry, how the heck do you, how do you see those cuts and get there? He says, you know, I see the same things you see. I can just get there, and you can. <laughs> Stewart got there. Barry Sanders' son is being recruited by both of these schools. Joseph Randall, the ball carrier. Good gain on first down. He got five, perhaps almost six, across the 21-yard line. And they are much more than just a passing team. Randall has rushed for exactly 1,200 yards for the season now with a seven tonight. Whedon sends Cooper in motion. Brandon throws and has his man. Colton Chelf across midfield. Delano Howell, the all pack 12 safety man, made the tackle for Stanford. 29 yard gain for Oklahoma State. Same concept. It's a little bit of a play action. It's over the top of the linebackers, and Shelf is able to get inside the safeties on top of the backers in a well thrown ball. First play over 20 yards tonight for Whedon and the Cowboys. He dumps it off to Cooper. And he lunges ahead to the 43. Jarek Lancaster made the tackle. But this is more typical of the rhythm that Oklahoma State gets into offensively. That's what you want to be able to do if you're this offense. They actually settle themselves down when they hurry their pace up. The one thing that this Stanford defense wanted to be able to do was get Brandon Whedon off his mark. They've not been able to do that so far. They rush five. Whedon zings one on target. And this will be a touchdown. First catch of the night for Justin Blackman, and he takes it to the house. And the Cowboys just woke up from their snooze. They wanted to move Whedon off his mark. They weren't even close. And when he has that time, he has great vision. The accuracy shows up, and so does Blackman. Sixteenth touchdown catch of the year for Blackman. The extra point is good from Quinn Sharp. It goes all of the punting in, place kicking for the Cowboys. Quick strike. As is their way, four plays, 84 yards, just a minute, 31 to do it. The big passes, 29 to Chelf and 43 to Blackman. ESPN College Football, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, is brought to you by Tostitos. Tostitos knows how to party. Vizio, delivering entertainment freedom for all. Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. And Gatorade. These teams have what it takes on the inside to win. Do you? Join the conversation. What a great time-honored 
tradition here in the Valley of the Sun, the Fort McDowell Fiesta Bowl Parade, a dazzling array of balloons, equestrian units, floats, marching bands, and another tradition. Quick scores by Brandon Weed in Oklahoma State. On average, they score touchdowns more quickly than any team in the country. It improved their average of a minute 46 with a 130, a one minute and 31 second touchdown drive there, just four plays. Well, remember we talked about patience on the defense and then making a mistake. Well, this time Stanford was not patient and they made the mistake and Blackman and Whedon made them pay for it. First four possessions for Oklahoma State, an interception of three punts, 27 yards of offense. That drive four plays, 84 yards, good kick by Sharp. Boy, Montgomery got knocked down by his own teammate, Jeremy Stewart, in the end zone. He wanted to run it out. Stewart said, no, you will not. Best hit of the night. <laughs> yeah, that is it. That is really well done. Listen, freshman. No, 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 no. You stay right there. <laughs> now, remember, it's where the ball is. It's not where the body is or the feet are. If they come out, it doesn't matter. It's where that ball was. And it has to come completely out across the goal line. Stewart. Stewart. Stewart's going to be on the tackle chart tonight. Yeah, he should be credited with a stop. The Oklahoma State fans don't like it. David Shaw doesn't seem particularly concerned. And no stoppage from the replay booth. Luck taking a very long time to snap it. And now it's ancient history. Stephon Taylor, a yard and a half. About 840 to go in the second quarter let's go back and look at that whether it's a touchback or not a touchback or whether he brings it out it's where the ball is at the player has nothing to do with it the ball the entire ball would have to come out and it did not do that in the estimation of the officials and Stewart made sure that ball didn't come out and I think the folks who were booing don't understand the college rule the ball has to come completely across the goal line into the field of play. And it never did. Therefore, it is a touchback. <laughs> Stephon Taylor stopped three yards short of the first down. Of course, that's not in the rule book. I don't know the page it's on where it says it is okay for a teammate to flatten one of his own <laughs> in think, the end zone to I help think, him I execute think, the I think touchback. what that's called is, is a senior priority. So you have the senior running back and he sees the freshman trying to trying to do something that's not very wise. I think it's in small print. It says you may drill him if necessary. And he's a smart Stanford people. Next up, Michigan and Virginia Tech. They have a tough act to follow with the BCS bowl action we've had today. Compelling Rose Bowl and an interesting start to this one. Luck on third and three. Throws incomplete, looking for Griff Whalen. And James Thomas had good coverage. Whalen and the Cardinal fans wanted a flag, which they are not going to get. You see Whalen in the slot. Thomas right here. They went five wide. They're trying to spread him out. Now he wants you to gain the advantage inside. He did have him on the hip, but that's good defense. That's good defense. If you are going to have anything, have it down low. They generally do not call that. There's David Green, the punt. He doesn't punt very often. Stanford punted 35 times this year. Only Baylor, Army, Navy, and Air Force punted less frequently. Josh Cooper brought that punt back. Tackled by Andrew Fowler, who's the long snapper. A transfer from Williams College in beautiful Western Massachusetts. Timeout, 6.57 to go in the half. Allstate is celebrating its seventh year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has given more than $2.6 million dollars in scholarship monies to universities throughout the country. Including Tiger Woods old school. He's on the Stanford sideline. He was their honorary captain out on the field for the coin toss before the game. Ricky Fowler outstanding golfer himself represented OSU. 
Joseph Randall back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it on first and ten for the Cowboys. On their own 33 yard line. Sean, I think it was significant the last series that they got the ball into Justin Blackman's hand. Remember, we saw him on the sideline. He got a little emotional. He was getting fired up about it. When guys do that, look, great players are great players for a reason. When they want the ball, you feed them. Even when they don't want the ball, if you need it, you feed them. Brandon Whedon throws. Blackman again breaks a tackle. And here he goes, running away from the defense. Injured and all, it's a touchdown for Oklahoma State. He's hungry. You feed him. Doesn't matter. You keep a safety inside. You have a corner on top. When you are a great receiver, it doesn't matter what kind of coverage you put on. Blackman fits that bill, and that's why he's got two straight scores. Two catches, but both for touchdowns. That one 67 yards. 110 total yards on the two grabs. The extra point to tie it good from Quinn Sharp. Justin Blackman, back-to-back -back Bolitnikoff awards for the best receiver in the country. Michael Crabtree of Texas Tech, the only other player who's ever won it two years in a row. And Blackman earned it. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of the 2012 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Justin Blackman, both touchdowns for Oklahoma State. That touchdown drive took 38 seconds, just two plays. The nation's leading 23rd touchdown drive that took a minute or less. And to their credit, they changed offensive coordinators. Dana Holgerson put in a lot of this offense, the up tempo ideas. He left to go to West Virginia as the head coach. Todd Munkin came from the NFL, had not been coaching in this type of a system, but he learned it and in some ways improved on it. Sharps kickoff. And Montgomery needed no assistance from Stewart this time. Sean, we talked about it earlier. When you have a great player and they get frustrated, which is what he was early in this game, and then he expressed his frustration. And when you see that, when you know he's 100% bought in, then you feed him, and you continue to feed him. The first is a score. The second one was just about power, which is what he is, and then his speed on top of it. You have woken up the Cowboy. He is the Cowboy. We speculated early if that thigh injury was bothering him. It certainly does not appear to be. He just started slowly tonight. There's Todd Monk, and what a great job he's done. He stepped in and basically learned the system they were already using. He came from the Jacksonville Jaguars, certainly not a spread up tempo offensive team. Here's Andrew Luck with multiple wide receivers. Ty Montgomery stumbled ahead to the 25 yard line. Good for a 25 yard gain to the 45, first and 10, Stanford. He sees that it's a zone. And so what they do to the right side is they take the receivers and they run them off. And then you take Montgomery and you fill the void with Montgomery, knowing that you've run everybody off. Big play. And you can really see the true freshman Montgomery coming on with more playing time. He stepped in for Chris Owusu, who was lost for the year after a couple of concussions. Five receivers again spread the formation for Luck. On first and ten, short for one of his roommates, Rick Whalen, who came as a walk-on with some academic scholarship help from the Toledo, Ohio area. Sent tapes around to about 70 different schools. Got a phone call from Jim Harbaugh. Jim liked the fact that Whalen was an outstanding student and liked what he saw in the football tapes as well. Comes from great bloodlines, as you saw his great uncles, Tom Seaver. Really haven't had a lot of tight end play to here tonight. They've gone to Montgomery a bunch and Whalen, but not so much of the tight ends. Luck after the pump fake, Whalen's open. Oh, that's a beautiful And throw. he's out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Roderick Brown knocked him out. Here comes Stanford on the move, trying to reclaim the lead. Roderick Brown on the top. Now, he he takes that pump, 
that just that little hesitation is the bump and the bite. And then it's over the top, and it's, I mean, you can't throw it better than that. Well, Luck and Whalen spent a lot of time together. You mentioned they are roommates. Center Schwartzstein and the right guard DeCastro, the other two roommates. Luck said Whalen's the kind of guy who just drives you crazy. He always has to be doing something, bouncing a ball, hitting golf balls. Luck throws, caught. There's the tight end, Kobe Fleener. Marked down at the 14 yard line with a six yard pickup. Everybody's talked about Andrew Luck and what makes him so exceptional. Now, he does things like this is second, this is next level things. He pumps, uses his eyes, he's moving defenders, he's making them bite on things. He knows that Broderick Brown on the outside is an aggressive defender. So he eyeballs him, pumps it, comes off it, and then does it again. He's way ahead of the game. Power formation now for the Cardinal. Taylor squirts through and has the first down to the eight yard line. It'll be first and goal for Stanford with under four minutes to go in the first half. Sean, this Stephen Taylor is an impressive kid. If you are, have you have not watched Stanford and you just see, oh, they got another thousand yard runner, you don't really appreciate what he does. This is a hard runner. He runs with great leverage, runs behind his pads, and he has an ability to burst into things at the end. The end of the run rather. He's rushed for 78 yards in the half. Luck dumps it short to the fullback Hewitt. To the four-yard line, gain of four. Alex Elkins helped him across the boundary. It'll be second and goal. And so Stanford has two straight touchdowns scored on him. They have to answer. And they do. How do they do it? With their quarterback. They come back, throwing the football down and patiently taking what the defense gives them. As you can look at it here. 63 of 64 possessions. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it's amazing. He's thrown 26 touchdowns without a turnover in the red zone. Andrew Luck. That's why you have those numbers. You have a great quarterback. He gets you in the right plays and throws it to the right people. He handed it off to Taylor, who slipped down. They only missed one time all year in the red zone. That was in their win over Cal when they went four out of five in the red zone. How about those numbers? 26 touchdowns, no interceptions in the red zone. Kellen Moore not too shabby either. No. What a great year he had. But really more than that, it's Lux intelligence. Son of a quarterback, his dad, Oliver Luck. Professional player after a great career at West Virginia. Luck exceptionally bright. Gives it to Taylor. Breaking tackles. Touchdown. Caleb Levy whiffed behind the line of scrimmage. And that was all she wrote. That was Taylor's ability to burst at the point. And, uh, and that allowed him to be able to pull away from Levy on the inside. Here comes DeCastro. There's Hewitt right there. See, he just takes, boom. He just gets through that thing, and then he walks into the end zone. Up to 82 yards for Taylor, who averages 96 yards per game. We'd have a better average than that if they weren't tailback by committee as well. We've seen all four of them carry the ball tonight. Williamson's extra point put Stanford back up by seven. Impressive response after their 14 and nothing lead went out the window. Wednesday night, 8 Eastern on ESPN, the ACC champion Clemson Tigers make their first appearance in the Orange Bowl since 1982, and they take on Geno Smith and the Big East co-champs, the West Virginia Mountaineer, the Discover Orange Bowl on ESPN, ESPN Radio, ESPN3, and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com. The Watch ESPN app Wednesday at 8 Eastern. Stefan Taylor, the... Four yard touchdown run, capping an 80 yard drive for the Cardinal in eight plays. Luck was five for five for 71 yards on the touchdown drive. 225, Oklahoma State can have three scoring drives in that amount of time. Williamson's kickoff down to Josh Stewart. He came out to the 23. Stanford, ninth in the country in time of possession. Last year they led the nation at over 34 and a half minutes per game. 
And Oklahoma State near the bottom, proving the time of possession really doesn't mean much <laughs> when you score as quickly as they do. Tonight it's 21 minutes and 21 seconds of possession time for Stanford to 6:14 <laughs> for Oklahoma State. So they're another quick drive away from a tie game. They can execute the third possession in a row. Whedon gets them off to a good start in that direction. It's Colton Chelf, the senior. Originally a walk on out of Enid, Oklahoma, just his 18th catch of the year and second tonight. Both big plays. This one 28. Yeah, the backer stumbled underneath. He was running with them, but Shelf got on top of it and because of the protection, right on the money. Whedon gets away from the rush. Now has plenty of room. Throws for Shelf again, ruled in bounds with a first down to the Stanford 38 yard line. That time they were able to move him off the mark. And this, this puts in. Yep. Puts in when he makes the catch. Good call. Then Oldham's the replay official. He hasn't had much to do yet Time tonight. Out. Stanford, that is their second charge timeout. This will be a 30 second timeout. Sean, as we watch this catch, no, he has control. He has a foot in. It is a good catch, right? There, great, great control. Your toes are down. Yep. Also, know this: it appears that both of these offenses have figured out defensively what's happening to them, and and so now they've kind of settled down and they've taken control of their games. And that can happen, Matt. Especially in a bowl game, you have four or five sure. weeks to prepare. The defense can give you looks you haven't seen before. And I these know teams are so well coached on offense; they adjust back. I know for Stanford what they wanted to be able to do was make Whedon get off his mark and make him move. But what they underestimate with Brandon Whedon is he throws the ball extremely well on the run. I think it's one of the things that happens with Peyton Manning. They'll say the same thing like you got to make him move. Peyton Manning can throw on the move. This kid he can do the same things. It's interesting you mentioned Peyton Manning of course one of the subplots here. This is the last game for Andrew Luck yesterday. The Indianapolis Colts lost, and they will have the number one pick. There's been much speculation that Indianapolis would take Andrew Luck. They are reviewing this play. I guess the question is, does he have possession while those toes are dragging and still in bounds? What we can't see from this angle is if he's bobbled it or not. Let's take a we'll look see at it that. from this angle. He catches it out in front of him. And that looks like it's a catch to me. Yep, he's, he's not like he juggling it. Yeah, had control all the way through. Nice job of keeping the foot down. You only need one in college, and he has it clearly in bounds. Drags it through. Field is confirmed. It was a good catch. And what we were talking about, Matt, that whole Indianapolis Andrew Luck thing, there were a lot of interesting twists and turns. Brian sure. Polian is the special teams coach at Stanford. Obviously, very familiar with Andrew Luck. Bill Polian, the vice chairman, Chris Polian, Bill's son, and Brian's brother both let go today in a stunning move to many by the Indianapolis Colts. So now you have no idea who's going to be making that decision about whether or not it'll be Andrew Luck with the first pick. I don't care who makes the decision, he's the right guy. No doubt. Tough day for Brian Polian, as you might imagine. Hard to believe there's an executive out there better than Bill Polian with his resume. In the National Football League, but the Colts are going to try to find that person. Good luck to them. I was stunned by that. Colton Shelf, the intended target, and I'm sure you were too, Matt. You spent a lot of years in the NFL as a player and as an executive, and, and that's a Hall of Fame resume. Built the Bills into that year after year Super Bowl powerhouse, started the Carolina Panthers, got them into a title game in their second year, and the great success in Indianapolis. Yeah, I was on the competition committee with him, and uh, Bill is one of those guys who is in control. He's a guy who knows exactly what he wants and which direction he wants to go. Second and ten. Blackman looked like he might have juggled it for a moment, but held on. 32-yard line will be where they mark it. And a minute 40 to go. All kinds of time for Oklahoma State. <laughs> well, they can go up and down the field several times with this much time at their disposal and all three timeouts third down and five and they're going to set the formation so they're trying to attempt to get a single up top here with Justin Blackman I think we saw something almost resembling a huddle 
<laughs> Shockingly, from the Oklahoma State offense. Whedon throws, and it is incomplete. Good effort by Josh Cooper on a ball that was just a little bit short. And Mike Gundy has the decision to make. They would be in range for a long field goal. It would be about a 50-yarder from here. And the long for Quinn Sharp is 46. They're going to go for it. Fourth and five. Trailing by seven late in the first half. The Cowboys going for it. And they convert. Blackman breaks the tackle. Well, got slowed enough that Jarek Lancaster had time to drop him inside the 10-yard line. 23 yards on the plate of Blackman on fourth and five. I thought that's what they were going to do on the previous down, Sean. By formation, they singled him on the outside, ran a nice route. He widened the defender first. Joseph Randall, the clock runs under a minute left in the half. He runs to about the seven for a two-yard pickup. Second and goal. In that last play, you saw Justin Blackman, at the, at the, when he came off the ball, he widened, and it made the defender get a little bit more to the outside, and then he came back inside. Flag on the play. Tom Ritter's our referee. As you might expect, these are among the best officials in the country. Their reward for outstanding work throughout the season is a big BCS bowl game. Substitution infraction on the defense. The 12 players did not get off the field. Half the distance to the goal. First down. And that can happen against Oklahoma State with the up tempo. Mentioned Tom Ritter and his crew. Tom Ritter and many members of this crew worked the regular season game between LSU and Alabama. The rematch up coming on January 9th for the national championship, the All State BCS national championship game. First and goal just inside the five. Randall again. He is a touchdown scorer, fourth in the country in scoring points this year with 150, but denied there. At about the two, it'll be second and goal after the Oklahoma State timeout, leaving the Cowboys with two. And a chance to visit with Heather Cox. Well, Sean, in 2010, Justin Blackman met nine-year-old Olivia Hamilton. She's battling cancer, and Justin made several visits to her in the hospital. Then Olivia came to watch Justin play and left a gift for him in his locker. It was a bracelet that says, Live, Laugh, Beats All. It's the acronym for the type of cancer she has, acute lymphomablastic leukemia. Now, Justin's worn that bracelet ever since and says every time he looks down at that bracelet, he sees her. I'm happy to report Olivia's at the tail end of her 108 weeks of chemotherapy is now in clinical remission in fourth grade on the cheer squad and cheering her heart out for Justin and the Cowboys tonight thanks to a very generous Oklahoma State fan that saw her story and wanted her to be here. A little on the shy side. Yeah, and they've become great friends. A lot of times players go visit patients in children's hospitals and it's a one-time thing. They've remained in constant contact. He has to be excited about what Justin has done tonight. Already two touchdowns. Whedon, after the play fade, throws for Blackman. Broken up by Terrence Brown. He had another receiver wide open going toward the far sideline, but was locked in on Blackman. This is really well defended. They do a nice job. Now, that, you know, that could have been, that could have been a, a touch right there. Initially, when I saw it, it looks like they were going to take him away completely and bracket him. And then the safety dropped down and just left him on the corner. Again, here we go. It's three. It's it's five receivers out, five wides, three to one side, two to the top side. Blackman's the guy. He's up top. Whedon does not have a rushing touchdown. You wonder about a quarterback draw. Not very likely, there but there it is. And he has one. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Nice call, my friend. Not the most gifted runner, but the most willing one probably on the team. Knew what he had to do and got it done. 
Another thing these two great quarterbacks have in common is their competitiveness. Extra point away from a tie with under a half minute to go in the first half and it's up and good from Quinn Sharp. There's Brandon's wife Melanie in the gray sweater on the aisle been married for about two years. You mentioned earlier he's 28 years old. <laughs> Apparently there are some people who play party games and every time that's mentioned there is a liquid refreshment consumed. But it does get mentioned a lot. Brandon Whedon played five years of minor league baseball, was a top prospect as a pitcher, drafted in 2002 out of high school by the New York Yankees in the second round. $565,000 signing bonus got him to choose professional baseball over the football career. Baseball was his first love. He never did really excel in the minors three different organizations the Yankees for two the Dodgers for two he was once a minor league teammate in Columbus Georgia Matt Kemp the Dodgers star and then one final year at Kansas City's chain he hurt his arm says it still hurts him to throw a baseball his shoulder aches when he does it but no pain at all to throw a football with a different motion well every now and then you'll see a little bit of the baseball come out of him with different throws that he can make but he's sure he can throw that ball and and he, he spins it well mm -hmm. and he's accurate. We talked about the Stanford coaches wanting to move him off his spot. The defensive coordinator is Derek Mason and Jason Tarver. So we want to knock him off his pitcher's mound where he likes to set up at seven to ten yards deep. Montgomery takes a knee. Brandon Whedon walked on in 2007. <laughs> what a wow. story his career at Oklahoma State's been. Coming up at the half, stay tuned. For Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer in the Buick halftime report. Already some exciting action. That Outback Bowl today between Michigan State and Georgia had a dramatic finish. And the Rose Bowl, as expected, was terrific as well. There's Jesse Dabati and Reese. Do they have enough people pampering them. I mean, <laughs> we're lucky if we can get a bottle of water up here in the booth. They have people feeding them grape. Luck takes a knee. And Great pretty much what we expected a slow start unexpectedly but it has developed into the offensive battle that we expected and each team doing it in its own style both being patient both feeding the guys who can get them in the end zone Blackman on one side Taylor and using luck on the other side four catches 139 yards and two scores for Blackman in the half here's Heather Sean, thanks so much. Coach, how would you assess the way your defense has handled Oklahoma State's pace so far? I think we've done well outside of a few big plays. You know, we, we've done a good job against the run. You know, Justin Blackman is as good as advertised. Uh, we got to make sure that when he catches the ball, we got to get him on the ground. Before the game, your message to Andrew Luck was not to take too many risks. How would you assess his decision making so far? I think he's playing really well. You know, the defensive back made a heck of a play on the interception, but uh, the, the, the no huddle we did to get Marsh down the field. Uh, Andrew on top of his game right now. Coach Shaw, thanks. We'll let you get to your team. Sean? All right, Heather, thank you very much. How impressive is David Shaw? That is a very impressive coach. What a job he's done stepping into the big shoes of Jim Harbaugh. At the half, Stanford and Oklahoma State tied at 21. Coming up, stay tuned for Reese Jesse and the Buick Halftime Report right after these messages. Welcome to the Buick Halftime Report. Best game of Jeremy Stewart's career was a 99-yard performance last year in the Discover Orange Bowl, a BCS victory against Virginia Tech. Stewart, 58 yards in the first half, a 34-yard touchdown. Stanford and Oklahoma State tied in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. 21 all Reese Davis Jesse Palmer here and a very balanced attack yeah. from the Cardinal just as we expected Lux thrown for 163 Cardinal run for 145 and Reese we know that Stanford's identity on offense is to run the football they like to use additional offensive linemen they pull guards they get bigger bodies at the point of attack and so far in this first half they've done a very good job dominating at the line of scrimmage on the very first possession of the game they're able to run a counter play to the back side of the formation Stephon Taylor getting into the second level of the defense a big play to change the field position battle early and by running the football it opened up big plays in the play action passing game Ty Montgomery wide receiver doing a great job 
stock blocking the safety, getting in behind for the easy pass and catch. Now, conversely, we talked about Oklahoma State's willingness to spread the field for Stanford to make tackles in space. Early in this game, Stanford took away Justin Blackman with double coverage on the outside of the field. Todd Munkin did a good job as a play caller, finding creative ways to get Blackman the football and in breaking routes as a result, four catches for a buck 39. I think when you look at Stanford, Offensive coordinator Pep Hamilton has a very hard job trying to create and fabricate explosive plays in the passing game without a wide receiver like Chris Owusu that can take the top off of a defense. As a result, Oklahoma State's been able to play coverages that allow their safeties to get involved in the running game. It's imperative in the second half. Stanford comes out, they hit some play action passes out of conventional sets and multiple tight end sets. They have to find a way to get those safeties out of the box. They have to soften up that Oklahoma State defense so they can get back to running the ball effectively. Both of the offenses didn't come out of the gate quickly, but boy, did they finish the first half quickly. We mentioned before the game that Stanford had not allowed a 100-yard receiver all year. So much for that. Blackman with a couple of explosive plays will go to Pasadena. Chris Fowler with the Rose Bowl after this. This Halftime Report is presented by Buick. See real stories of human achievement on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. And Chris, it was sweet for the Ducks indeed. Uh, certainly that helped the perception of the Pac-12. Stanford will be doing the same thing. And sometimes that's overblown. I think selection to a bowl is not uh, in any way equal performance or dictate performance. What's your impression of the day? Well, you heard the guys just talking about it. This was another bad new year for the Big Ten Conference. And Kurt just mentioned last year going 0-5 in bowl games on New Year's Day. Of course, Wisconsin lost the Rose Bowl to TCU today. They go 1-4, in four, and in those four losses, they were outscored by 47 points. Wisconsin again loses the Rose Bowl. And the Big Ten now 1-8 in, in Rose Bowl games since the 1999 season. When you talk about the perception of that conference, they need Michigan to beat Virginia Tech tomorrow night in the Sugar Bowl. So Michigan will have that opportunity to Nard Robinson after the resurgence season under Brady Hoke getting the 10-win season. You'll be able to see that on ESPN tomorrow night. But a second half to go here from Glendale. Stephon Taylor more than 80 yards in the first half, averaging better than six yards per carry. Cardinal and Pokes tied at 21. This halftime report is presented by Buick. See real stories of human achievement on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. presentation of the 2012 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl from Glendale, Arizona. Number three, Oklahoma State. Number four, Stanford tied at 21 at the half. After a slow start for both teams offensively, the numbers really started to pile up 307 total yards for the Cardinal. And the big edge as expected in time of possession in Oklahoma State after just 27 yards in the first quarter had 250 for the half. Welcome back. Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, rejoined shortly by Heather Cox. It turned out to be what we expected it would be after the slow start. Yeah, and so a couple things have to happen here in the second half. I think for Stanford, they've got to figure a way to be able to throw the ball down the field more than they have in the first half. Except for one blown coverage, they pretty much were playing inside of a box. And then for Oklahoma State, well, they found Justin Blackman. And Stanford's going to have to find an answer to Blackman, and that's not going to be an easy task. Brandon Whedon. And Andrew Luck moving their teams up and down the field in the second quarter in particular. Jordan Williamson kicks off for Stanford down to the five to Justin Gilbert. And he's pulled down by Michael Thomas at the 30 yard line. Here's Heather. Sean I just had a chance to catch up with Mike Gundy and he admitted his quarterback Brandon Whedon started the game very nervous as evidenced by that first pick. He said once Brandon settled down our entire offense did we got into speed rhythm and tempo and that's when we're at our best defensively he said we must tackle better Gundy feels they gave up about a hundred yards due to poor tackling in the first half. 
They started slowly, first four possessions, an interception on the first play of the game, thrown by Whedon, their first play, then three punts. But they were outstanding in the second quarter. And Whedon on target, first throw of the second half to Colton Chell for a five-yard gain. And they come up very quickly to the line now, as quickly as they have all night. And then they caught him, too. And it's Joseph Randall yanked down by Jarek Lancaster, short of the first down by about two. They haven't been able to get the running game going. Randall now with just 12 yards. They haven't converted on third down here tonight. This is their best shot at doing it, third and one. Inside handoff, and they do convert on third down. There's Randall. Took it to the 42, where he's tackled by Chase Thomas. What a job Mike Gundy's done with his Oklahoma State program. In just a few years, he's taken them right to the BCS where he wanted to be. But what I'm really impressed with with, hi with him is he, he projects a calm demeanor to his team. Never gets flustered, and it's a carryover. You see it with his group. He's really grown and matured into the job. Whedon throws short. Oh, a tough break for Oklahoma State. Randall was wide open with plenty of running room, but he went down to a knee to catch it, so they settled for a gain to the 47, a pickup of only five. They could have had twice that if he stayed on his feet. They're going this three-by-one set. They move Blackman around a lot. You can see his knee go down right there. They move Blackman around. It's kind of like, where's Waldo with him? You have to be aware of him, and you have to be able to find and identify him. He's up in the top of the slot. Oklahoma State has not led tonight. Three-man rush for Stanford and an incomplete pass. Good effort by Chell, who's been very actively involved tonight. Had just 16 catches all year coming into tonight's game. He's at four tonight. There is a flag on the play. In a relatively penalty-free game to this point, Oklahoma State flagged just once, stand for three times. Illegal formation on the offense. Number 71 was not on the line of scrimmage. That penalty is declined. Third down. Parker Graham. Back up right tackle. Third and five. Big down here for the Stanford Cardinal. They've got to try to get off the field to get the ball back. Levy Adcock not in the game at right tackle for Oklahoma State. He's first team all Big 12 for the second year in a row. On third and five, Whedon is sacked. Pulled down back at the 37-yard line by Trent Murphy, who's from right here in the Valley of the Sun. Watch and what, Matt Masafilo. Watch what they did, Sean. At the end, they stamped. They moved late, and then they attacked the protection. They move their guys right at the end, and it forces the offensive line to have to hesitate. And that hesitation is what allowed them to be able to get in and make the sack. And they came in with 38 sacks for the year, sixth in the country. They bring a lot of pressure. Loss of nine, forces a punt by Quinn Sharp. Fielded on the bounce. Some running room for Drew Terrell. And out to the 41. Andrew Luck will take the field for the first time in the second half with the Cardinal and Cowboys tied at 21. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of the 2012 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Stanford doesn't throw the ball deep very often. They don't have a lot of speed outside of receiver, but they've been effective tonight, Matt, when they have gone deep down the field. Yeah, he's two out of three past 15 yards. But think about that, Sean. The majority of his throws were all underneath because they can't really push it down the field. They had one blown coverage, and that was the one big play. But that puts a lot more pressure on the quarterback to be more accurate in a shorter space. Tied at 21. First possession of the second half for the Cardinal. Quick hitter to the speedy time Montgomery. It looked like he got tackled by the towel, or he might have been off to the races. Markel <laughs> Martin he yanked him down at the 42 of the Cowboys, a 17-yard game. Those towels can be dangerous. Sometimes they could knock an eye out. You never can tell. 
but at the very least they make a tackle well blocked on the perimeter and then he just hits it in that crease and now Stanford coming up quickly to the line this works to the advantage of their quarterback and this offense he has the whole offense in his brain and he can run anything up, up there he calls anything Good field position after the 26-yard punt return by Terrell. Now it's Taylor dancing in space. A little stiff arm, and then he lowered the shoulder to Justin Gilbert to get the first down. Sean, did you see at the end of that with Taylor? He knew where the sticks were at the end. He just dropped this level, and, man, he just bore right into it. That is really well done. Watch the awareness. There's the sticks. Now watch him sink. Sink and come through right there. Boy, that's good. So look from our direct TV ultimate picture cam here they come again Taylor been balled around at the 28 yard line chopped down by Broderick Brown finished off by Nigel Nicholas but a gain of five and Taylor approaching the 100 yard mark and yeah, the pinball wizard in there he's got he does come with a twist he <laughs> has very good what is it called again kinesthetic sense that's your thing body part awareness very good job of his ability to make his body go where he wants it to second and five pressure on the delay Taylor Markel Martin up from his safety spot stuffed the run with help from Caleb Levy no gain on the play that's what Stanford wants to do you heard Jesse Palmer talking about it at the half. They want to be able to get those safeties committed down inside. Committed to the run, then they'll take their shot over the top. Big third down here for this Cowboy defense. Big Tuan Lowe, eight. Markel Martin, ten. Those are the two. You watch them drop down. They form the numbers in the box. Andrew Luck having a conversation with the officials. And there's a stoppage in play. There was a malfunction of the 25 second clock. Therefore, there is no timeout charge to Stanford. Third down. the umpire standing over the ball and then the referee will start the clock right now now he'll walk off it. and both the play clock and game clock are moving just underway third quarter still tied at 21 that was the halftime score for those who tuned in late Stanford led 14 to nothing scored first for the 24th time in their last 27 games and the catch made by Zach Ertz for the first down and that's important that they get the lead. Bill Young, the defensive coordinator of Oklahoma State, said one of the best things that can happen to us is to get the lead, and then maybe we can take Stanford a little bit out of that comfort zone with the run game. Yeah, and so far they haven't been able to do that. But he's called a heck of a game here tonight. He rolls the bones every now and then. And when he does that, he takes his chance with his blitzes, and he brings numbers to his side. He's done well. Taylor squirts through a hole. And got stood up at the 15-yard line, but it's a gain of six. And Bill Young's been one of the best for a long time. 1968 graduate of Oklahoma State. He's been a defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, Ohio State, USC, Miami, and now back at his alma mater. And one of the really good guys as well. Really good guy. And he was he was had a short stint up in professional football, Detroit Lions, as a defensive line coach. And at that time, he told me, you know, his heart was really back in college football. And boy, he has made his mark here. 103 yards rushing now for Taylor, his sixth 100 yard game of the season. And a little bit of a flinch by Jeff Mikan, the left end of that line. The false start against Stanford. Hard to the snap, false start. 73 offense, five yard penalty remains, second down. Apparently, Cameron Fleming flinched too. Fleming's number 73 he's up here just that little bit of little fly in his shoulder try to get it off but both they ends caught of the line him. bouncing yep. just a freshman he's got a bright future big powerful man 
Yeah, 6'6", 307. One of three new starters on that offensive line, but they're wrapped around the All-Americans at left tackle and right guard, Martin and DeCastro. Now to the outside comes Taylor. Oh, that's oh boy, what a night he's having. Not a big run, but he did well to get every inch of that inside the 16-yard line for a gain of five. He got no help out of his out of his pulling guard here. It's Yankee 54. Yankee can't quite get out there, so he has to use that on Broderick Brown, who's a very good open field tackler. Just a little dip back inside allowed him to get to the edge. He sets up this third and about four. 13th 100-yard rushing game. Only Darren Nelson and Toby Gerhardt with more. Luck under center now, and a big third down and five, eight and a half to go, third quarter. 21 all. Luck has his man. Touchdown, Zach Ertz. Markel Martin fell down. You don't have to make, you make a small mistake like falling down, which is a big mistake. <laughs> He's going to get found. You're going to get found right away. Watch up top. You can see him in the slot. And it's about vision. And if you're going to back off, that was a mistake by Markel Martin. He backed off too soon on a third and short. You're going to give up the first right away. He slid, and it gives up six. And with the extra point, seven. Well, Stanford has recaptured the lead. Hurts the touchdown reception. I think that's a bad. yards. <laughs> ESPN College Football, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, is brought to you by Tostitos. Tostitos knows how to party. The Ford F-150, available with the efficiency and power of EcoBoost. Discover Card, it pays to switch, it pays to discover. And Allstate, play the Allstate Championship Challenge at AllstateChallenge.com. The Bowl block party has been a favorite New Year's Eve celebration for locals and visiting college football fans. More than a million people have enjoyed the Fiesta Bowl block party over the years. Zach Ertz with the 20th touchdown reception by a tight end for Stanford this year. More than half of their touchdown catches from the three tight ends, Ertz, Toilolo, and Fleener. At Zach Ertz in high school had it had my old teammate Brent Jones as a as a coach. There's a pretty good tight end. That's a pretty darn good one. Learn from Danville, California's Ertz hometown. The great former tight end of the 49ers, Brent Jones, really taught Ertz how to play that position. Justin Gilbert brings back Williamson's kickoff. Nice move to get away from Batamosi. Still going. Across midfield and the late flag thrown right as the tackle was being made. We noted earlier Gilbert has returned four kickoffs in his career for scores, two of them this year. Fifty yard return, but there is the flag at the very end of it. There is no foul on the play. First down, Oklahoma State. It's a good job by the officials to be able to confer, talk it out, and then make the right decisions. Important to get it right. That's a nice move right there to get him to the edge. And then just good vision, Sean, cutting back inside. The kid's got some run skills. Oklahoma State's been playing from behind most of the night. They have not led in the game. The rally from 14 nothing down to tie it, then fell behind 21-14, tied it again. And trying to tie it yet again. Jeremy Smith gets the carry, a gain of one. Here's Heather. Right before Brandon Whedon took the field, Mike Gundy came over to him and said, we need to play with more tempo, more speed. We thought they were already playing fast. We'll see how much faster they can go. We do have the first team all conference right tackle Levy Adcock back on the field. And an All-American. His 27th straight start. They one of the best centers in the country and Grant Garner. They fake a reverse handoff to Blackman. Threw it short to Randall. 
For about two more, Chase Thomas and Terrence Brown on the stop for Stanford. Yeah, nicely done by Terrence Brown. He makes that play, but Chase Thomas is the guy because he forced him from the inside out. There was no cutback lane because of great hustle. Third down and seven. Oklahoma State, two out of seven on third down tonight. Cardinal showing a blitz. Ooh. A little scared down here. He starts to back up off of Blackman. Whedon changing the play. Play clock at six. They rush just four, and it's dropped by Cooper. That's a rarity. Might have been turning to see what he needed for the first down. Instead, it's fourth and seven. Carpley was right there, number 17, but you're right, Sean. This is usually money. Cooper's one of those guys who, like I said earlier in the game, he's a chain mover, and he's usually a guy who's extremely dependable, and that one bit him in the rear. Quinn Sharp in the punt. Terrell back deep for it. He was the leading punt returner in the Pac-12 this year, 12 wow. yards per return. Another moon ball from Sharp. And it'll be down inside the three by Josh Stewart. Six forty one left third quarter and the long field looking at Andrew Luck in the Cardinal offense. Andrew Luck from Stanford is one of four finalists for the AT&T All-American Player of the Year. He passed for 3,170 yards and 35 touchdowns during the regular season. The Heisman Trophy runner-up for the second straight year. Text vote 55862 from your mobile phone to vote. For your choice for the AT&T All-American Player of the Year and a chance to win a trip to the All-State DCS National Championship game. The other finalists are... Monty Ball of Wisconsin, Robert Griffin III, and Alabama's Trent Richardson, and the winner will be announced during the All-State BCS National Championship game. Lux missed on only three passes tonight. On their four touchdown drives, he's a perfect 12 for 12. From their own three, leading by seven, and a fumble recovered by Oklahoma State. As it looked like Mikan never got the handoff, and Markel Martin came up with it. Poor ball handling inside. Just going to be that fullback. Just wants to just get on it quick. And it's, it's he's reversing out. The ball is inside. He got a little bit high. Yeah, up in the got it high pads. up on his pads. Second turnover of the night for Stanford. A look from our direct TV ultimate picture cam. Sean, the fact that Mark Hill Martin was right there at the line of scrimmage lets you know they dropped their safeties down fast. Brandon Wayne out of the gun. First and goal from the four. Touchdown to tie. Randall down to the two. Matt, when we talked to Bill Young yesterday about all the takeaways, the national leading total for the Oklahoma State defense, we said everybody practice is stripping sure. the ball and trying to get takeaways what's the key so well a lot of it is just luck yeah. and there it was just luck it bad was. handoff they give you the ball on the four yard line it was Andrew luck you're right from the two Randall again <laughs> oh nice hit yeah and he spun forward to the one kind of going with a Stanford approach Extra people in the backfield here down near the goal line. Third and goal from the one. Leno Howell, number 26, he showed up in a bad mood at that line of scrimmage. Parker Graham back in there for Adcock at right tackle. Weeding out of the gun. Fakes it this time to Randall. Throws, man, open, low throw, and it's incomplete. Looking for Kai Staley, the fullback. There's an injured Oklahoma State Cowboy on the play. Brandon Weed is going to want that one back, Sean. He waited too long for it. He had him wide open in the back. That might be Parker Graham, the tackle, but he waited too long. He threw it behind him. And, you know, even Still with that, caught. should have been caught. But it wasn't a perfect throw, certainly. 
Luck knowing that they had some right there. Staley is a frequent target. Fullbacks typically don't touch the ball much in this day and age of college football, but he has 10 catches. Parker Graham is the injured player and will be back right after this. Parker Graham helped off the field. We mentioned a couple of times about Adcock, Levy Adcock, but he's actually playing left tackle tonight. We had him listed on our charts as the starting right tackle, but it's been Graham at right tackle most of the game. He's been helped off. They're going to kick a field goal on fourth down and goal, a 19-yarder up and good by Sharp. First field goal of the game for either team. And they get just three points after the turnover at the four-yard line. Next Monday, January 9th, 8 Eastern ESPN. Don't miss the marquee event of the college football season. One versus two in the All-State BCS National Championship game. Top-ranked LSU takes on number two Alabama in a rematch of their dramatic regular season game. Dramatic if you like defensive battles. And this time it's for all the marbles. The All-State BCS National Championship game on ESPN, ESPN Radio, 3D, ESPN3, watch ESPN.com, Monday, January 9th at 8 Eastern. Your thoughts about the rematch? Yeah, we've talked so much about the defenses, and both defenses are extremely good. But this game is going to be determined by which quarterback shows up. The quarterback that will play the mis most mistake-free will be the team that wins. Because generally in big games like that, it's not that you beat the team, it's that you don't lose it. And, and so you do that by making fewer mistakes. Of course, Oklahoma State narrowly missed being in that game. Mike Gundy saying, wouldn't people rather see a 39-36 game than another 9-6 game? He wanted to see his high-flying offense against that LSU defense. But didn't get the chance. Ty Montgomery tackled by Joe Mitchell. John, let's take a look at that Stanford running game, what they're doing tonight. This is what Andrew Luck does so well. He gets to the line of scrimmage, and he makes, he, he calls the play to always give you an advantage number-wise. You see three defenders, he brings another one and makes it five or four versus three. Again, here's, here's five on one side, three to the other. He goes to the three side. Anytime you have a matchup where you can balance the numbers, or in some instances, gain a number by pulling a guy, that is an advantage to you offensively. That's what... Luck has done so well. Stanford having another good night rushing the ball. And it's Taylor doing the bulk of it. Powered ahead for a little more than two. Caleb Levy made the tackle. Down to five minutes left. Third quarter. Stanford has never trailed. Leading now by four as the Cardinal defense did a terrific job after the offense turned it over inside the five-yard line, forced a field goal. Sean, defensively, as you look at Bill Young, their defensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, defensively, it's all about gaps, defending gaps. Each individual defending a gap, then collectively you handle it. But when you get a number differential and you're three on one side, you gain an advantage when you bring the fourth into play, and that destroys your gap concept. Luck back to throw. Rose caught first down. Out to the 33-yard line, Griff Whalen. Finally wrestled down to the ground. Gain of 14. So we're saying they don't have a lot of speed, and they don't really have any big playmakers. And so you say at home, well, then how do they get open? Well, when you're playing zones, when you have a guy who runs very disciplined routes and knows the holes and is on the same page as the quarterback, you get open. Stanford up to the line quickly in a very tight formation. And Taylor running left, following the fullback, Hewitt. Leaps ahead to the 40. Game of about seven and a half. And let's check in with Heather. Sean, the Oklahoma State offense will be without right tackle Parker Graham. He's being taken out on the cart right now. He suffered a lower right leg injury. They're taking him back to receive x-rays on that shin, but he will not return for the Cowboys tonight. And now Caleb Levy slow to get up. Their starting middle linebacker, third leading tackler for the year. That guy there is, he's, he's kind of the brains of that front seven. He gets everybody lined up. Looks like he's maybe got, uh, maybe got the breath knocked out of him or something. Hopefully that's all it is. 
as he goes airborne at the end of this thing yeah it probably just gets landed yeah, there, on too yeah. much sometimes you know you've been in those situations where it just all comes out of you at once and it just takes you a while to get it back and thankfully that is what it appears to be although I don't think Caleb Levy's all that thankful to have those few moments of discomfort yeah but now by rule he has to go out for at least one play and then he'll, he'll be back in and by rule there's very little the training staff can or wants to do to help him second down and three luck has gone out to the top of your picture Tyler Gaffney is in a quarterback ordinarily a running back and it's a design run and Oklahoma State was not fooled by the interesting formation Ryan Robinson and Cooper Bassett combined for the stop yeah here's a hot tip keep Andrew Luck at quarterback mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as you see that formation, they just blitzed it. And they brought more numbers than you could block. And the net result is third and about six. Luck does have one catch this year, and it was a memorable play along the sideline when he made a leaping one-handed catch. Ball game against UCLA for a 13-yard game. Three minutes to go, third quarter. Big down here for this Oklahoma State defense. Luck. With Stewart on his hip. Stewart stays in the block. And it's complete to Fleener for a first down to the Cowboy 49 yard line. Zach Craig, a backup safety, and Daytuan Lowe made the tackle. And now it's Fleener slow to get up. Well, this is only going to happen because they have good protection right here. And they bring pressure. So you've got five coming, and then it's Fleener on the backside. And Fleener push it up, and then he has good speed. But Andrew Luck, of course, is the key. Watch him. He thinks he has man-to-man, -man, and when they're in man, you can do that. Go ahead and eyeball him the whole time. He knew where he was going. Well-thrown ball and a first down. Cleaner, a senior, 6'5", 254, heading the NFL. He runs about a 4'5", From Lamont, Illinois, how about the story he told us yesterday? He was being recruited by the previous staff. Walt Harris was the head coach. He got fired. There was no coach. He took his recruiting visit when there was no football coach. There was they no hadn't one there. Jim Harbaugh yet. Exactly. He met Tara Vandeveer, the legendary women's basketball coach, and she was very impressive. And he said, basically, Stanford sold itself when I was there. Play action fake. Luck has a receiver wide open. First down. It's Levine Toilolo. The third tight end to catch a pass tonight for Stanford. He's down inside the 33. Lux hit 11 in a row. That one good for 17 yards. Another advantage, another advantage of Luck is he can roll both ways, and he's effective both ways throwing. Throws on the run extremely well, and Toy Lolo is the recipient. He's a big target at 6'8". Three men in a line behind Luck. They shifted Mikan out. Now it's Jeremy Stewart spinning ahead to the 25-yard line again of seven. It'll be second and three. Wednesday night, 8 Eastern ESPN, the ACC champs Clemson taking on West Virginia in the Discover Orange Bowl on ESPN, ESPN Radio, ESPN3, and streaming live on the WatchESPN.com and Watch ESPN app. Wednesday, 8.30. Oliver Luck, the AD at West Virginia's. Father of Andrew Luck. And of course, the head coach for West Virginia, Dana Holgerson, last year was the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma State. Taylor straight ahead for a first down, and again, every ounce of effort to get everything he can and finish the run at the 20. And coaches yep. talk all the time about finish. That's what and he does extremely well. He sure does. And, and you know, a lot of time where he's been finishing has been off his offensive left side. And the reason is because he's got a good one right there. And Jonathan Martin, that offensive left tackle, he has been securing that left edge a lot tonight. He has been dominating on that side. The top prospects in the upcoming draft, we assume, he is a junior, could come back, but the expectation is both he and David DeCastro, the junior right guard, will go. Ryan Hewitt couldn't catch the pass from Luck and his consecutive completion streaks over, but we have, in the opinion of Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper, Four of the top 15 picks in the upcoming draft. 
if they all come out. They're all juniors. Yeah, and Andrew Luck's coming out. Blackman's coming out. And generally, the strength of every class, Sean, a, a draft class, is the junior class. They are the best players. All four of them are expected to end their collegiate careers. Castro and Martin already have degrees. Andrew Luck does as well. He goes out of the gun on second and ten. Look out from behind. He's sacked by Jamie Blatnick. His team leading eighth sack of the year for the senior from Salina, Texas. Yeah, you can see right down here, it's Jamie Blatnick. And talk about getting vertical. See, they block down inside, and then Taylor tries to cut him. But Blatnick has the wherewithal to be able to just go right over the top. Jamie Blatnick has been fun for me to watch because he's a powerful kid. 500-pound bencher, which there are not many of those around. And with athleticism, too, as we just saw, leaping over the block, third and 16. Luck. Set up the little screen to Montgomery. Turns the corner. And out of bounds. But with a first down, there is a flag on the play. On the edge, it may be on Whalen down the field with the hold. He comes up gimping, too. That's not good. He's the only speed they have in that offense. On the outside receiver position, certainly, and it is against Stanford, wiping out an 18-yard gain and a first down. And they'll take it from the point. After the pass and during the run, holding number 17, offense, 10-yard penalty, replay third down. Watch him on the top side. Yeah, that's a good call. He, he hugged him initially, yeah. and he's still holding him right there. Justin Gilbert being victimized. And as they run the clock, the quarter ends. As anticipated, the 41st Tostitos Fiesta Bowl has been a dandy. Still 15 minutes to go in regulation time with the Cardinal leading by four. We're back in Glendale, Arizona for the 2012 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Attractive matchup coming in, three versus four for just the third time in the BCS era, which began in 1998 and it's lived up to the hype. Oklahoma State outscored seven to three by Stanford in the third quarter. So the lead again for Stanford is four points. And what did the first and third quarters have in common? Justin Blackman didn't have a touch in either quarter. He had four of them for 139 yards and two touchdown receptions in that second quarter. Yeah, you don't want to put him in the witness protection program. You need to get the ball to him ASAP and as often as you can. Third and 13. A big stop for Oklahoma State if they could force a field goal try, and even if it's made, keep it a one-score game. From the 23, Andrew Luck out of the gun. Tries to catch him off guard with a run by Stephon Taylor, and he very nearly got the first down. He came up only about a yard and a half shy. Tackled by Alex Elkins, who never played football until he went to junior college at Blinn Junior College. Made the team on an open tryout and started and is now a starting linebacker in the Big 12. And playing pretty good and getting better. So they do force a field goal try. 30 yard effort from Williamson, who barely missed earlier from 41. They failed to score in the red zone only one time all year, and that one just does hook back. So they're four for four in the red zone tonight with three touchdowns and a field goal. Sean, let's see how fast they can find Justin Blackman, because Whedon has to find him. are looking to reclaim their spot as one of the nation's top programs while the Hokies are out to make a statement against one of the Big Ten's elite. The All-State Sugar Bowl, Michigan, Virginia Tech. Coverage begins January 3rd at 8 on ESPN. And we're back at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl just underway in the fourth quarter. Stanford with a field goal has pushed the lead back to seven. 
with their 25th drive this year of 10 plays or more most in the country well, they're the best team in the country at long scoring drives and Oklahoma State the best at the quick strike both have lived up to form tonight the kickoff was out of bounds from Jordan Williamson so great field position to start this possession for Oklahoma State will they get the ball back to Justin Blackman well if they're smart they will Blackman is legitimately a great player and great players make great plays and when they get fired up like he did and insisted on getting the ball then you oblige because they can make plays like this it's about power powerful hands his ability to break tackles they need to get him involved the third quarter they were void Justin Blackman's letting him know right now hey here I am get me the ball in the moment it looks like he has single coverage with Terrence Brown Whedon looks right but throws down the middle incomplete intended for Colton Chelf with Michael Thomas the safety flying by Sean that's exactly that's the look they want to give but what they're doing at the snap of the Stanford Cardinal defense is they're taking the safety and they're sticking them over the top they do not want Blackman to get on top of that coverage you can see half the field but there's a safety sitting on top of them and about 18 yards off the line of scrimmage Whedon throws back for Cooper just a two yard gain he was swung down immediately by Harold Bernard who's really come on in the second half of the season as a pleasant surprise for the Stanford coaches third and long big down big play watch the screen watch the draw they're a rhythm and tempo offense and right now Oklahoma State has neither third down and eight Whedon throws a wobbler but it's caught by Cooper and then he got hit out of bounds there is no flag he was knocked across the boundary by Bernard and then Delano Howell came over right on the edge of what's allowed 18 yard gain and they'll go with the hurry up right here after a big play that's what they like to do 40 yard line first and 10 quick hitter to Blackman who slipped and that contributed to just a two yard gain Terrence Brown made the tackle the sophomore from Torrance California let's yep. go back to the previous play when Cooper made the catch the big deal now you can see at the end there's a hit as he's going out of bounds yeah, he put no flag yeah in a beautifully officiated game by this Southeastern Conference crew Smith the running back Stanford brings four Thomas got there at the last instant Whedon did get it off Smith the recipient and he's a yard short of the first down to the 31 as we go under 13 minutes left in regulation time they go hurry up but Chase Thomas is a guy you have to account for on this Stanford defense great hustle great motor and has pass rush skills we in the quick swing this way Cooper made a man miss and is down at the 19 yard line with a first down yeah, right out there, Jordan Richards, it looked like his athletic supporter is still laying on the ground. Cooper made a miss. Big play. Here they go again, Sean. It's fast pace. If I have time to say it between plays, Miles Mawagatu Tui uh, <laughs> made the tackle for Stanford. Cooper. Yanked down by Delano Howell, who was first team. All Pac-12 at safety, despite the fact that he missed three games with a hand injury. You can see that right hand is still heavily wrapped. That's how much respect the coaches in the Pac-12 have for him. Missed three games, still first team. He is a big hitter in the back of that defense. Second and eight. A touchdown and the extra point to tie for Oklahoma State. Twelve minutes to go. Whedon down the same. Blackman again, a touchdown. His third of the night. That's completely on the safety. You have him back there for a reason, Sean. Lined up on the corner, and you're backing him up with the safety. Now you turn him over, and now he becomes a safety player. Oh, he just he slipped. Yeah, it wasn't even close. Miles, I'll say it again. Mawa got to Tia. Mawa got to Tia. Mawa got to Tia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mawa got to Tia had a slip. Not good. Okay. The extra point good by Sharp. 
As the great Frank Royals used to say, with Keith Jackson, Wea is the safety man. <laughs> exactly. In this instance, he slipped. Three touchdowns, six catches, 158 yards for Blackman in the tie. ESPN College Football, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, is brought to you by Tostitos. Tostitos knows how to party. Taco Bell, think outside the bus. AT&T, an official sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. And Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Here we go indeed. Set up for an extraordinary finish. Stanford and Oklahoma State tied at 31. Larry Fitzgerald, the star wide receiver, the Arizona Cardinals, enjoying this one. What a game he had yesterday. Several tremendous catches in their overtime win. And he has to appreciate the great work done tonight by the future NFLer Justin Blackman. Yeah, Larry Fitzgerald is a rare one and a great one. And when the game is on the line, you get him the ball. And that's what the Cardinals did at the end. And Blackman's doing now. Now it's the Cardinal on the return. Ty Montgomery bringing back the twin sharp kickoff. He got knocked across the boundary near the 32 by Andre May. Here's Heather Cox. The Stanford offense will be without tight end Kobe Fleener. The last series you saw him come off limping. They retaped his right ankle. He gave me a thumbs up, said he was good to go. And then as he jogged out, he immediately returned to the training table, had the tape removed. They've now put ice on it. I've been told that his return is doubtful. Good thing they have a deep core of tight ends, guys. Yeah, but that's still a huge loss, as you know, yes. Heather. 32 catches, 20 yards per catch. Leads all FBS tight ends in touchdown receptions. Particularly a favorite of luck in the red zone where they're so outstanding. From the 31, first and 10. Stanford has not trailed in this game. They're led by 14 at 14 to nothing early on. Stephon Taylor bounced back after he crossed the 35. Markel Martin made the hit senior from Wichita Falls Texas playing in his final game for the Cowboys pretty aggressive by Mark Hill Martin and Dayton Lowe both those safeties you can see him inching down again here he is and the formation would dictate that eight man front two fullbacks in the game leading the way for Taylor who ran into the tight end toy Lolo and slipped forward Across the 38-yard line at a big third down at about three here, a short three for Stanford with 11 minutes to go. Stanford is very comfortable with getting to third and three. That's what they call third and manageable. Bill Young told us yesterday he was very surprised on third down and three. Stanford is almost always a passing team. We thought that was surprising given the strength of their power running game. Bringing pressure. And they do pass on third and three. Luck trying to run for the first down, and he gets it. Shoved out of bounds by Cooper Bassett. It is a first down for Stanford. We said at the start of the game, he could beat you with his brain, he could beat you with his arm, and he could beat you with his legs. That's option C right there. Big first down. Six yard run. Huge conversion. Better than two to one advantage in time of possession. The edge in total yards significant for Stanford, but they're tied at 31. Taylor threw a big hole. Seems to have another first down inside the 46 of Oklahoma State where Alex Elkins having a big night. Yeah, having a really big night, Sean, is Taylor. And watch him. He's just going to foul 52 DeCastro with a nice block. They're pulling him on a power on the inside. And then it's get your eyes up. And like you talked about earlier, he finishes his runs really well. There's DeCastro, a projected first-round pick, a unanimous All-American this year. Had a great year. Out of Bellevue, Washington. 149 yards rushing for Taylor. On his way, it seems, to his career high. He might get it 
didn't come very close to it on that run. He got to the 42 yard line. His career high is 153. Again, it's David DeCastro on the inside. Just lower your pad level and then gets the move. And that's on Rashetti Jones. And he, again, like a good running back, he just keeps on driving his legs. Second down, six. It is a career high for Taylor trying to add to it. He has 154 before this carry. Trying to get away from Markel Martin, who wrestled him down, but it's another first down for the Cardinal at the 29-yard line, 12-yard run. Nice job. Munkin, number 10, does a good job of securing the edge. You can see him, and then here comes DeCastro again. It's everybody assignment football. Get a guy and a guy. That's what they do extremely well. Nice job by Hewitt, 85. And then Markel Martin, with a good angle, is able to run him down. Just have so many players on this team who filled the role so well, as you saw from our DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. Once again, Luck is not the quarterback. Tyler Gaffney is, and again, he gets splattered. They've tried that twice, and it's been dropped for a loss both times. Jamie Blatnick said, get that nonsense out of here. <laughs> Oh, man, Blatnick shows up in an angry mood right here. See, Elkins does a nice job of forcing it back inside. DeCastro's on top of him, but because he holds the edge that time, Blatnick can lower the boom. I think Gaffney might say to the coaches, you know, it's okay with me if Luck <laughs> plays quarterback on every snap. Yeah, exactly. Three-yard loss. They're back to the 30. Taylor in trouble, and they're going in reverse. Great penetration again. Martin up from the safety spot. Blatnick in there again. And that's Bill Young. And he's bringing pressure. Markel Martin down. That's your safety. And he comes with the safety, putting him in the box. And because it's Lewis, 11, who makes the play. Lewis makes the play off the edge, forces it back inside. Martin and Blatnick make it and sets up this third and long. And they might have backed out of field goal range at this point. It would be a 50-yarder from here. The long for Williamson is 45. Long time in the huddle for Stanford. They break the huddle with 10. Third and 14, tie game approaching seven minutes left. 14 yards to go. Luck flushed, throws on the move, caught! First down. Griff Whalen refusing to go down, finally taken to the turf. Enormous. Third down conversion back to the 13-yard line comes Stanford. And a lot of layers to this. First is protection, and then it's ability to extend the play by going outside, and then it's Whalen who's able to come back to the ball in front of the defender, and the ball is perfectly thrown and well-anticipated, Sean. That was a well-anticipated throw when he saw Whalen make the break back. On the move, perfect spiral, just the right height. First passing play of the drive. They go back to the run, and Oklahoma State continues to stop it. Taylor dropped for a loss. Back at the 16 by Ryan Robinson. It appeared to me that they were going to try to okie doke that time and try to jump out the backside. They were going to they were securing the edge on the left side. It looked like that time Taylor was going to hit the brakes and come out the other side. But Robinson did a nice job of holding the backside and staying deepest to deepest. Nine runs, just one pass. Lots of time coming off the clock in a tie game here in the fourth quarter. At the very least, they're in field goal range. They're in the red zone again, where they have failed to score only once all season. Luck rolls left, dumps it off to his buddy Whalen. Initial hit by Martin, and then Rochetti Jones took him across the sideline at the 10 yard line. You know, Whalen and Luck are roommates, like you mentioned. And, and you mentioned about how Whalen kind of annoys him at times, always having to do something. He's fidgety. And, and Whalen says, Well, what do you expect? The guy likes to go to bed at 10 30 every night. <laughs> <laughs> I got a kick out of that. If you're going to play quarterback as Luck does, you need to get your rest. Here's a big play. From the 10-yard line. 
Again, a long time in the huddle. And they're going to use a timeout. Timeout. Oklahoma State has their first charge timeout it's in this the half. Cowboy defense calling the timeout. Third and seven when we come back, a tie game with 5 12 to go. Back at the spectacular University of Phoenix Stadium, ESPN's presentation of the 2012 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Stanford in the red zone trying to break the tie at 31 all. With 5-12 to go in the fourth quarter, they came in 98% of the red zone scoring this year, and they've actually improved on that with four for four tonight. Three touchdowns and a field goal. Third down and seven. Just outside the 10-yard line. Need to get the three for a first down. Whalen back and forth and back again in motion. Fake to Taylor. Luck dumps it to Whalen. Banged out of bounds just shy of the goal line. Got the first down. He tried to get the six, and Broderick Brown wouldn't let him do it. Broderick Brown, the bulldog. Boy, he's, he's taking himself out. That was a collision down there. A big one. Well done. They bring him out of the backfield, sneak him into the flat, and then they roll him. Watch the hit. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Roderick Brown knows he cannot let him into the end zone, and he gives you everything he's got. Lowers his pad level, runs through it. And you know he doesn't want to come out. They call him Bulldog because he's as competitive as anybody Bill Young's ever met. From the goal line, it's Taylor surging, still fighting. And apparently in now, says the line judge. Touchdown in the lead for Stanford. That looked like the old rugby scrum. Low man wins in football. Those of you high schoolers out there, get your pad level down and then finish. Finish. Don't stop your feet. Keep moving. Whether you're an offensive lineman or a running back, Wow. Well, at the yeah. very end there, it appears he got it to the goal line, and the line judge had a tremendous view of it, and the extra point's good. Michael Shirey right on the call. So Taylor having a career night. 162 yards rushing and two touchdowns. All kinds of time left, however, for Oklahoma State with 434 to go, down by seven. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of the 2012 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, developing into a classic. 13 play drive, 69 yards. Andrew Luck was three for three passing. Most of it was done on the ground. With Luck on their five touchdown drives tonight is 15 for 15 passing. They converted a third and three when he ran for six. They converted a third and 14 when he threw to Whalen for 20. They have not trailed, but Oklahoma State has been answering all night long, and they have four and a half minutes and two timeouts, and Whedon and Blackman at their disposal. And a very good kickoff return man as well, Justin Gilbert from the two. And a quality run back to the 33. He was finally stopped by Harold Bernard. We hope for more excitement in the Orange Bowl brought to you by Discover West Virginia the Big East Coast champions ranked number 23 and Clemson in their first Orange Bowl since 1982 on ESPN Wednesday night 8 Eastern with our terrific crew of Mike Tirico John Gruden and Ron Jaworski Sammy Watkins the freshman receiver you talk about speed he has it in spades Whedon throws short Seventh catch of the night for Blackman, who's caught three touchdown passes to tie the Fiesta Bowl record. Corey Gatewood, the converted wide receiver, made the tackle. It's a gain of seven. Darnell McDonald and Rhett Dawson, Kansas State and Florida State, respectively. The others with three touchdown catches in a Fiesta Bowl. Late blitz. Down. They still got a hit on Reed in the pass. Falls in the neighborhood of Blackman, but incomplete. 
And here's third down and three with 4.05 to go. That was an opportunity right there, and they missed it because they had single coverage, no safety. You see, they bring Leno Howell down inside, and they were trying to cover the middle of the field with the linebacker. Blackman had gotten there, but because of the pressure, they weren't able to complete it. Four for 11 on third down tonight. Not up to their usual standard. Third and three out of the gun. Whedon. Oh. Swing pass for Randall. Looking for help and does not get it. Driven back by Delano Howell, the brilliant safety. And a decision for Mike Gundy. Fourth down and three with under four minutes to go. No hesitation. That was a great play, incidentally, by Howell. Worked off the blocker and made the tackle and sets up this huge fourth down. Fourth and four, Oklahoma State. Three and a half to go. They're at their own 40 and down by seven. One-on-one -on -one outside with Blackman. Whedon, the slant, caught by Blackman. First down and much more to the 39 of Stanford. 21-yard gain, and the stars are shining brightly when it matters most on both sides tonight. No hesitation, that's a gimme. You get one-on-one -on -one with him, throw it. Stanford clearly winded in the rush. No pressure on Weed and Randall. Running room down to the 20-yard line. 19 more. The Stanford defense very tired. Howell made the tackle. Three minutes to go. Blackman's on the sideline trying to catch his breath. They're walking around. You're right, Sean. They're gassed. Both teams exhausted. Whedon, again, plenty of time. Again, a receiver inside the five, Michael Harrison. What a time for his first catch of the night. His 20th of the year, good for 16. Blackman still on the sideline. And Whedon showing what he's got. Nice poise, no pressure. He's in control. Randall, touchdown, Oklahoma State. The Stanford defenders tired and confused. And a lot of times, the fatigue will mess with your mind as well. And an extra point from a tie with 2.35 to go. It's all about decisions, Sean. Decisions under pressure. Weeding that time, flawless. And Mike Gundy. Mike Gundy as well. Going for the fourth down at his own 40. With plenty of time and timeouts left. Huge extra point here for Sharp. Missed only one all year, and he still missed only one all year. <laughs> 38 apiece, 2.35 to go. That Oklahoma State drive took just a minute and 59 seconds to go 67 yards in seven plays. Watch the hurry up. See, look at the, look at the Stanford defenders. Massafilo stand, they're just standing there. No, no call, they didn't yeah. know the call, and it's interesting, because they told us yesterday the players, Chase Thomas, that in those situations they had a preset call they could just go to when they were confused and scrambling and about to be caught by the pace. Seeing that whole thing there, that last play, you looked at Randall and he went into the end zone. There was still some good hitting going on. They knocked his mouthpiece right out. You saw it come tumbling out in the middle of that picture. That was the 24th rushing touchdown of the season for. Joseph Randall, only Barry Sanders has had more in a season. And only Barry Sanders has had more points in a season than Joseph Randall has put on the board this year. Waiting on the phone to Todd Munkin. And now interesting, Stanford generally likes to drive it slowly. They might have to pick up the pace a little bit with 2.35 to go. Sharp leads the country in touchbacks. Kenny Baumwart. Montgomery won't bring it out tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate and a huge conversion on fourth and three from their own 40 no brainer you have one on one on the outside and it's Justin Blackman he's the best receiver in the, all of college football and you got Corey Gatewood out there and he's a converted receiver and he just it was that was like stealing 
Watch him. Little bounce to the outside. Opens his hips. Once his hips are open, Blackman's off to the race. Powerful. See how he just plucks it out of the air? 8-186 and, and three touchdowns for Blackman. 38 apiece. And now it's Luck's turn with 2.35 and three timeouts. Throws short and caught by Zach Ertz. They're without his favorite tight end target, Kobe Fleener. Out with an injury. He's in control. He's directing everybody at the line of scrimmage. Who does he remind you of? Peyton Manning. Mm -hmm. No question. Might be a teammate of Peyton Manning. Might be the heir apparent to Peyton Manning. Throws short. Taylor has the first down. 32-yard line. Clock stops to move the chains. 156 and all three timeouts still for Luck and the Cardinal. Now, I always have talked about this. It's not about the decisions. It's decision-making under pressure. And that's what he does so well. Great points. 306 yards passing for Luck tonight. Throws to Ty Montgomery. He's out of bounds with a nine-yard gain. And a field goal could well win it. Williamson has a long of 45 this season. Wasn't so sure that the Oklahoma State Cowboys got everybody off the field in that one. They were still kind of stumbling off the sideline when that ball was snapped. The freshman Williamson could be thrust into a huge spotlight in moments. Second down and one. Luck has moved past John Elway on the Stanford all-time career passing yardage Coming mark up. tonight. Here comes pressure. Right up the middle, Elkins, and it's a screen. Taylor trying to pick up blocks. Didn't get a lot, but got the first down to the 45. Minute 34 to go. Clock stopped. Sean Lewis made the tackle. Well, I like that call. If that came from... From Andrew Luck, that's a heck of a call. Nice anticipation. Look at the discipline of the eyes to draw the covers to the other side. And then here it comes. Inside handoff. And Taylor to the 50. They want to score with as little time left on the clock. They know if they leave even a few seconds for Oklahoma State, that might be enough time for a Cowboy response. They're about 25 yards away from a field goal. Five-man rush. Here comes a sixth. Luck got it off. Jeremy Stewart up the near sideline. Inside the 30 and chopped down at the 25. And there's your 25 yards. But that is all on Luck. He felt the pressure. Pressure in the face. Watch him scan. He sees the open receiver and just bang, gets the ball right where it has to go. Great poise. And another big play by Stewart in his last game for Stanford. This is from right here, Sean, is a 42-yarder. They want more yards here, obviously, at 50 seconds. That's like two scoring drives for Oklahoma State. I believe it's Daytuan Lowe, the injured player, their starting safety and leading tackler. We mentioned earlier that Andrew Luck's been perfect on the five touchdown drives. 15 for 15. He's five for five on this drive. Trying to end his remarkable Stanford career with a remarkable finish and a virtuoso performance. Sean at times watching Andrew Luck. He bores you with completions. He bores you with efficiency and bores you with good decision making as they march down the field for a score. Low being helped up. With all due respect to the great Robert Griffin III, in my opinion, this is the best football player in the country. And I think he's going to have a career like Peyton Manning and John Elway. In the National Football League, we talked to David Shaw yesterday. Said, what kind of a year has Andrew Luck had? He says, it's the best I've ever seen anybody play the sport of football.
he knows what he's given him a to work with and what he allows him to do at the line of scrimmage and that's why he says those things a good timeout I was just going to ask you Matt if Oklahoma State should start using its timeouts yep. Stanford has plenty of time now they're in field goal range they have their timeouts Oklahoma State has to start thinking about getting the ball back for them is they just have one timeout left. You know we've been talking about Mike Gundy and the job that he's done but David Shaw on the other sideline in his first year taking this thing over there are a couple things that surprised me a year ago. I was, I was talking to John Madden this afternoon about this and it was one of the things that he echoed. First he was surprised that Andrew Luck came back and then he was equally surprised that John Harbaugh left after he knew Jim Harbaugh. Uh, Jim Harbaugh left after he knew that Andrew Luck was going to stay. And what Harbaugh knew was that David Shaw was a guy who was very capable and very in charge and had a great understanding of not only this offense but this team. And boy did he show that this year. And what Jim Harbaugh also knew is the 49ers pay a little bit better than they do at Stanford. <laughs> And what a team what a year they've had in San Francisco what a great that defense as good as there is in the National Football League. Well the nation's leading takeaway defense could really use one here you know that they'll be protective of the ball. One of the other things these two teams have in common their only loss of the season they each turned it over five times they've learned the lesson. Taylor the carry and Oklahoma State has the one time out left but they're not going to use it. And it's looking more and more like it's going to come down on the foot of the red shirt freshman Jordan Williamson from the 20 that's a 37 yard field goal saw David Shaw hold up three fingers he might want the timeout for the field goal team with three seconds to go Taylor stopped short of the first down would be third down they got him right in the middle of the field. Three seconds, you're right on. Coming up after the game, stay tuned for Sports Center right after the Ford BCS postgame show. A lot of highlights from some magnificent action all over these bowl games today. And Sean, this will be a 34 yard field goal attempt. It's at the 20, no, I'm sorry, it's a 17 yard line. 17 yard line, that's the 24, that's 34 yards. Heather. Jordan Williamson is a man on an island except for when coach came over and said just relax this is fun at that point Jordan Williamson took a knee took a deep breath rolled his shoulders and started practicing again guys this is a freshman who's had an excellent year red shirt freshman out of Austin Texas second team all Pac-12 missed three games late in the year with a leg injury but came back for the final two he's one out of two tonight just missed from 41 made a 30 yarder missed only one all year from inside 40 yards this is a 35 yarder to give Stanford its second win in as many years in a BCS bowl game timeout timeout Oklahoma State that is their third and final timeout this will be a 30 second timeout and that's what he saved his last time out for. Answer your phone. Yeah, it's a high standard to live up to for Michigan and Virginia Tech. The next game up tomorrow night, 8 o'clock on ESPN. Matt and Heather and I will be privileged to have the call on ESPN radio. The All-State Sugar Bowl. Bernard Robinson with probably the best first step in all of football. And the first step for Williamson better be a good one here. Highly recruited kicker out of Westwood High School in Austin, Texas. Andrew Fowler is the snapper. Daniel Zaklinski, the holder, pressure on them as well. Perfect execution in that part. The kick is no good. He hooked it badly to the left.
Just pulled it. He was 11 for 12 from inside 40 yards this year. See his lips, he said he missed it. He knew it. And Matt, we've talked about it all night long. Their success in the red zone. Just the second time this year, they failed to score in the red zone. And we're heading for overtime, tied at 38. Sean McDonough, Matt Mellon, Heather Cox. Classic Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And we get to enjoy it for a while longer. Stanford and Oklahoma State tied at 38. The end of regulation. The Cardinal not trailed in the game all night. Here's Gentlemen, Tom we're Ritter. entering the first overtime period. In the overtime period, the winner of the toss will have their choice of offense, defense, or end of the field. They will have that choice in the first and every odd period. The loser of the toss will have their choice in the even period. Each team will have one timeout per overtime. They do not carry over. Stanford, you are the visiting captain. We have the same coin, heads and tails. What is your call? Tails. His call is tails. It is heads. The, the defense, which end of the field you're gonna be on offense. You want to go okay, you put your turn around, that's a Oklahoma State wins the toss, choose to go on defense. Stanford's on offense, first down. Well, it took till overtime of his last game, but we finally found something Andrew Luck isn't good at. He's a bad coin toss picker. What a stiff. And usually, when you have the choice, you go on defense, because each team's guaranteed a possession in overtime, and it helps to know what the other team did. Then you know what you have to do when you get the ball. Possession starts from the 25-yard line going in. You would think it's a format well suited for Stanford given their effectiveness in the red zone but they just missed for the second time all year in the red zone they are now 70 for 72 once getting into the red zone after the missed field goal by Williamson third overtime game in the history of the Fiesta Bowl and who can forget the previous two Ohio State and Miami and Boise State and Oklahoma one of the wild, dramatic finishes in the history of college football. Luck under center. They start with Taylor. And he bends forward near the 20, a gain of five for Taylor, who continues on a career night. 175 yards rushing. He said at the start of this game, they would be patient with that running game, and they have been. Luck is 26 out of 30 for 344. Two touchdowns and interception. There was movement along the offensive line. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 11 offense, five yard penalty. We lane second down. Levine Toy Lolo. Well, regardless of the outcome, both of these quarterbacks. Record setters at the respective schools are departing for the performances they can be proud of. Both of them accurate. Both of them stay in the pocket. They'll both do well at the next level. We 28 the, years old. Back to the 25. Taylor in trouble. And Caleb Levy drops it for a loss. They'll mark it at the 27. And now they're running the risk of having to attempt a long field goal by Williamson, who has to be a little bit rattled after what happened a moment ago. So now defensively for this Oklahoma State team, what Bill Young has done in these situations is brought pressure and forced him to throw underneath. And what has gotten Stanford out of the trouble has been uh, 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 Andrew Luck's feet. He's spreading again that five-wide look. 
They're showing just a three-man rush, which would give you eight men deep. Some very conservative runs here to start overtime. Now they put it in the hands of Luck. Four-man rush, throws short. Montgomery couldn't make Markel Martin miss. Down to the 25, right where this overtime session started. And Williamson returns to the center of the ring. Bill Young did just that. He showed three Sean, but he brought five. And because of the pressure, he had to dump it off quickly underneath. Both misses this year in the red zone for Stanford were field goal misses by Williamson. He missed a 33-yarder against Cal, a 35-yarder to win it here a moment ago. Now a 43-yarder from the right hash mark to give them the lead. And that one's hooking, and that one is no good. That time there was a little bit of an issue with the snap and hold. He snap rolled the Fowler back. bounced back. Yeah, he rolled it back and it did a nice job of getting that thing back up, Sean. Klinsky, the holder, did get it down, and Williamson had plenty of leg. And now, Oklahoma State, which has not led in tonight's game at any point, will win it with a score here. And they're in field goal range, so it'll be interesting to see how they play it. Some critics of this format don't like the fact that you're in field goal range really when it starts. And Quinn Sharp is a great kicker. They flip it to Blackman and he slips down as he tried to make a cut with Howell right in his face no gain it's Harold Bernard who came up from that safety spot remember early in the game he bit but allowed that first big touchdown pass Stanford brings pressure. Weed and throws down the middle. And it is caught by Cho for a touchdown. Oklahoma State wins. Matt, I would think we might have a review to make sure that Chelf got into the end zone. It was very close as to whether or not a knee was down before that ball got in. Yeah, they'll review it. It's a scoring play. They're going to have to get all those people out of that end zone. Review. And Colton Chelf, if it stands, the unlikeliest of heroes, surrounded by stars on both teams. Here's a senior who came as a walk-on and had only 16 catches all year. He made a very nice catch in his fingertips. And, ooh, I don't know about that. Great look at it. When does the right knee there. touch down? Yep. There you go. Knee down. Well, That's it's not down yet. Keep it's going. down now. now. It's about and the, the half ball's yard not line. in. I think they're going to spot it at the half yard line. Yep. And deprive, at least for the moment, Holden Shelf of an unbelievable place in Oklahoma State football history. He'll still be a hero with this catch or if they can punch it in from inside a yard. Delano Howell. Bad hand and all, heavily wrapped, made a tackle. And who knows? Could be meaningful. Sean, that's a great job by Shelf, but an even better job by Whedon. He found him and right on the button, right where the ball had to be. And it allowed for this to happen. And it looks like after further review, the runner was down with the ball at the half yard line. It'll be first down and, and goal at the half yard line. Oklahoma State. Chell from an Oklahoma State family. His dad, Randy, played at OSU. His younger brother, Clint, the backup quarterback, might be Whedon's replacement this year. That close to the biggest touchdown in Oklahoma State history. He has five catches for 97 yards after that 24-yard play. Now what do you do if you're Mike Gundy get the ball in the middle and kick the field goal or hand it to somebody and pound it in or have Whedon keep it and pound it in. I, I'll, I'll run it in right here. 
Put it in the hands of a guy who's done it before and is and is trustworthy. Randall would be that, and that guy. That would be Randall. Although Smith is a power back as well. Shaw knows that Stanford needs a miracle now, but stranger things have happened. They do send the offense back out. At the very least, if they're going to try a field goal, they want to get sharp off the left hash mark. It would be a very sharp angle, no pun intended. They go out of the gun with Jeremy Smith, who's more of a physical runner. They're just going to put it in the middle of the field and put it on the foot of Sharp. No surprise, Sean, that the times that Oklahoma State moved the ball was in the second and the fourth quarters. And the reason? He was able to get the ball into Justin Blackman's hands in those quarters. Mm -hmm. Down the stretch, Whedon was brilliant, as was Luck all night long when it mattered. 13 out of 14 on the last three possessions for Whedon to set up sharp for heroics. A great kicker, one of the best in the country. Been both the first team punter and place kicker in the Big 12. That is the first and only timeout of this overtime period. It should be a 30-second timeout. In fact, he's the only player ever to be first team all conference in the Big 12 as the punter and place kicker. Williamson had his chance to be the hero. You have to feel for him regardless of which team you're cheering for. And now they need a colossal mess up by the Oklahoma State Cowboys. If they're going to play another overtime period. What an entertaining game though. Well played game offensively for both sides. They started off strong defensively and then they cracked the code. Sharp one for one tonight. The chip shot 19 yarder. 21 out of 24 on the season has not had any blocked. Connor Circo is the snapper. Wes Harlan the holder to win it. It is good. Oklahoma State with a flag down has won the Tostitos Fiesta Ball. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense, uh, penalties decline, the point is good. Game is over. The only lead of the night for Mike Gundy and the Cowboys is the margin of victory. Whedon and Luck, they're friends. They spent the last couple of summers together at the Peyton Manning Passing Academy in Louisiana. A great appreciation for each other's people and even more appreciation for each other's football skills after this. But Oklahoma State wins in its first trip ever to a BCS Bowl game. They win 12 games in a season for the first time. The present is awesome. The future might even be brighter for this program on the rise. And Heather Cox is with Mike Gundy. Sean, thanks so much, Coach. Congratulations. Your first BCS Bowl game results in your first BCS win. How has this season really changed the way that people look at Oklahoma State football? Well, I think that uh, from coast to coast, people have a lot of respect for Oklahoma State football. And what a great job by our players to battle back all night. I like to give a lot of credit to Stanford and their team. I mean, what a great effort. What a great football game. We talked about this being a great game, and I'm just really excited for everybody, and I want to dedicate this win to the four victims of the plane crash. Um, it, it meant so much to the Oklahoma State people and to our team and um, for their families. Um, the players wanted to do it, and so I, we didn't want to say anything about it before the game, but we wanted to win this for the four victims. I know it's certainly been an emotional season for you guys. Now, Coach, only a fraction away from playing for a BCS championship. What case did you guys make tonight for a possible split national championship? Well, once we figured out we were playing Stanford, we felt like that they were as good as anybody in the country. They had one loss, but when you play with a quarterback like they have, you got a chance to win every every Saturday. And I couldn't say enough about our team and what Brandon Whedon did and the way he fought back. So I like Oklahoma State. I like our team. I like where we're at. Everybody said, including you yesterday, that you thought that this game would go down to the final possession. Indeed, it did. Ultimately, what do you think the difference was? 
Well, our team rallied. Every time we got down, they just found a way to come back. And they've been very resilient. The coaches did a tremendous job. I don't know how many people we had here. I'm going to guess 35 or 40,000 people wearing orange. It was a group effort, and that's what it takes to have success. Coach, enjoy the victory. Congratulations. Thank you all. Thank you. Sean? It also takes a little luck, and at the end of the game, luck was on the side of Oklahoma State when Williamson missed the field goal that would have won it. There would be no celebration like the one we're watching for the Cowboys. And he referenced the plane crash on the day that Oklahoma State suffered its only loss of the season at Iowa State, November 18th. Women's basketball coach Kirk Budke, his assistant Miranda Cerna, pilot Olin Brandstetter, and his wife Paula were killed in a plane crash. They played the game that day with very heavy hearts. Who knows how much, if at all, it impacted their performance that night. And given the loss of life, it wasn't important in the larger scheme of things. But they rallied back from that adversity with an unbelievable performance. The biggest win over Oklahoma since 1947, and they cap it with a scintillating win over an outstanding Stanford team. Mike Gundy called the best team they played all year. They lived up to that tonight. Let's go back to Heather. Sean, thanks so much. Joined by Brandon Whedon and Justin Blackman. Justin, congratulations. Now, early on, you appeared on the sideline to be frustrated. How did you get your game going to finish with three touchdowns? And you know, you just got to stay positive, put the pass in the pass, and, you know, you got to finish the game. It's four quarters of play, and that's what we did. Now, you haven't made any formal announcements, but even Coach Gundy said he would be shocked if you came back to Oklahoma State. Are you ready to make an announcement? I think I am. You know, I think I'm... Uh, Going to go ahead and enter the draft and, uh, you know, see what happens after that. We wish you the best of luck. Congratulations. What a way to end your career at Oklahoma State. Thank you. Got a lot of help from your quarterback as well, Brandon Whedon. Congratulations on an outstanding performance. You started the game, your very first throw, an interception. How did you recover and regain composure? Oh, well, you got to put it behind you. As tough as it is, you know, you got a little jitters. You're excited. You want to get out there and play. And, and all the stuff goes into it. You know, you just try to, I try to do too much. And, just got to settle down. That first quarter was uh, wasn't very good for us, and uh, was kind of had a setback. Spot on 14 points, and uh, you know we bounced back and ended up winning a big game for us. And you guys certainly dodged a couple bullets. What were your reactions when Stanford missed not one but two field goals to keep you guys in this? You know, obviously uh, we were excited. Uh, you know, we, we had one kind of go miss that didn't go our way in Iowa State uh, mishap there, and, and uh, you know everything happens for a reason. You know, I ended up winning it, and. Uh, yeah, I can't, I mean, I, yeah, I give Stanford a lot of credit. That's a good football team. I mean, their defense is one of the best I've faced all year, and, and uh, you know, that's, uh, that's, like I said, it's a good football team. You cap off an amazing career at Oklahoma State with a tremendous performance tonight. Next up for you, the NFL draft. What are you hoping for? What are your goals on draft day? You know, just put myself in a position where I can, uh, you know, better myself in my career. I think uh, these next few months are going to be big for me. I'm going to start training and, uh, you know, just, like I said, just get better. Continue to get better and, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. another chapter in my life. You put together a great resume tonight. Congratulations. Thanks, Heather. Sean? He's had a remarkable life. Minor League Baseball for five years. Walked onto the program. Wasn't sure he'd ever get a chance. Became one of the great quarterbacks of his time in college football. One of the greats in the history of the program. And led them to their biggest win ever here tonight. We're 28 years old. Some wonder if that will work against him in the NFL draft. He says, hey, I've taken very few hits. I have a fresh body. And he is an accurate thrower, and there aren't very many of them. Blackman had eight catches for 186 yards in a Fiesta Bowl tying three touchdowns. Whedon finished with 399 on 29 of 42 and three touchdowns. And as is so often the case, it comes down to the kicker. Georgia couldn't kick one in the Outback Bowl earlier today and lost. Stanford couldn't kick one and lost. Quinn Sharp kicked one and won. And there's a lot of Andrew Luck's career that doesn't seem fair. I can't believe he didn't win a Heisman. And it doesn't seem right that he leaves on a loss, especially on a night when he threw for 347 yards and threw only four incomplete passes all night long on 27 of 31. Well, both these quarterbacks lived up to exactly what we thought they would be. Blackman did exactly what we thought he would do. Great players, they show up in big games, and they did their part. As Dennis Green once said in this very stadium, the Arizona Cardinals, they are who we thought they are. Exactly right. They were all great. What a show they put on. Still more to come. Final score, 41-38 in overtime. Oklahoma State over Stanford. The Cowboys, your Fiesta Bowl champion. Stay tuned for the Ford BCS postgame show right after these messages.
Welcome to the Ford BCS Post Game Show. And welcome back to University of Phoenix Stadium here in Glendale, Arizona. The 41st Tostitos Fiesta Bowl ends in overtime. Oklahoma State a winner, 41-38 over Stanford, the only lead of the night for the Cowboys. Now down to the field, Reese Davis for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Awards Ceremony. Reese. And Sean, this was certainly a hard-earned victory. Was that any fun? What a way to cap off the greatest season in Oklahoma State history, wouldn't you say? I thought they might like that. Joining me to present the awards down here, Frito Lay, Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer, Ms. Ann McCurgy, the Senior Director of Marketing for Tostitos, Ms. Janelle Anderson, and Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Chairman, Mr. Dwayne Woods. Dwayne, will you please make the first presentation? I will, thank you. On behalf of Tostitos, the best sponsor in college sports, our Fiesta Bowl family of 3,000 volunteers and our staff, it is my great honor to present the 41st Tostitos Fiesta Bowl game trophy to Coach Mike Gundy, the Oklahoma State Cowboy. Congratulations, guys. And while Mike takes this trophy, Mike, I want, I want you to take me through the emotions. What was it like when Stanford was lining up for that final field goal attempt in regulation for you? I had this feeling there's a chance that we would either block it and he would miss it. And I don't know why, because uh, you don't know, but I just felt like something good was going to happen. Our players had been very resilient, and I was just hoping that it would work out good for us. And if we got a chance to go in overtime, I felt like that we could find a way to get it done. Okay, how about when you thought Colton had scored the winning touchdown at the end? What was that like? I will admit that was kind of a downer. <laughs> uh, but uh, what a great way to end a game for a young man that's walked on to our program, earned a right to play, and made a big play at the end of the game. What does this say, Mike, about not only the great two seasons you've had, but the potential for staying power for Oklahoma State among the elite nationally? Well, obviously, these guys have set the bar very high. Um, these seniors have won 41 games in four years, and Oklahoma State football has come a long, long ways. We, the challenge will be for our underclassmen to keep it at a high level. We've got some great players that are leaving here on both sides of the ball, but we have a tremendous administration. We got people that are willing to pay the price, and our coaches have been unbelievable. It's all about the assistant coaches, the coaches and the players. Would you like to start dancing early, or are you going to wait until you get to the locker room? No, you want him to dance now, right? I, I, YouTube, YouTube is killing me. I can't go anywhere anymore. I, I do want to say this. I'd like to bring up Shelly Budke and let her hand this ball to Shelly Budke. Shelly, of course, the wife of the late Kurt Budke, the women's basketball coach at Oklahoma State, and such an important part of the Oklahoma State family who was killed in that tragic plane crash. Round of applause. Ms. Budke, thank you. And we have some more hardware to hand out here, some player hardware. Yes, we do. On behalf of the entire Tostitos family, congratulations to Oklahoma State. And your offensive player of the game from Oklahoma State, number 81, Justin Blackman. Justin, I know that this is a great way to end your Oklahoma State career. Uh, take me, a little bit of a slow start, take me through what it was like, those, those first couple of big plays you busted in the first half. Uh, you know, uh, coaches made great calls, and uh, Brandon was putting the ball on the spot. So uh, I was just happy that uh, I got the chance to make the play. O-line did great all game, and uh, glad I get to celebrate this with my teammates and coaches. And you also get to celebrate it with a very special friend in Olivia, too, a young lady who's uh, battled a lot of adversity, and you you've been able to celebrate and share a lot of your career with her. Right, I'm just glad that I could uh, be on a stage where I can make a difference in someone's life, and I'm uh, glad that I got to uh, meet her and have a good time, and hopefully we can keep this going. Eight catches, over 180 yards, three touchdowns. What a way to finish, Justin, congratulations. Thank you. Justin Blackman, two-time Bolitnikoff Award winner as the nation's top receiver, finishing in style, and Ann, clutch defensive plays two at times. You got it, and who is it? Number four from Oklahoma State, Justin Gilbert. Justin, not only on defense, but you had some great plays on special teams in the return game too. 
what was it like out there tonight facing this uh, this power based Stanford offense? Uh, you know, it, I mean, it's tough going against uh, those bigger guys with, with something we're not used to. So I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I get a lot of credit on, on special teams to the guys up front blocking for me to create lanes for me to uh, run through. So I mean, it's fun. It's all about having fun out there with these guys. When you got into overtime, they got the ball first. What was the mindset of the defense at that moment? Coming out there, you'd had trouble stopping them all night, 25 yards away from a score. What was that like? Uh, it was nerve-wracking. Uh, we knew we could get a stop. We just been playing kind of slow on defense all night. I mean, so I mean, we had le uh, leaders on defense, senior leaders that uh, got in our heads a little bit, amped us up a little bit. So I mean, what statement did you guys make about where you belong in the final poll, at least in the Associated Press? Uh, I think we pretty much proved it tonight by what we, what we came out on top. Justin, congratulations. Great performance. Clutch performance by the Oklahoma State defense as well. The Cowboys beat Stanford. They win it 41-38, the greatest season in Oklahoma State history, and a great way to finish here in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl for sure. Dwayne? Sure. Well, congratulations. You played your hearts out tonight against a very worthy opponent in a tremendous game. But before I leave, I want to turn to Anna, Janelle, and the entire Tostitos team, and thank you for all you do for college sports and to help make our bowl a great one. And for those who joined us tonight, thank you. Drive safely and have a very happy new year. I think they'll all go home happy after the great show put on tonight by both Oklahoma State and Stanford. Guys, congratulations. Sean, a great way to finish here in Glendale. Indeed it was. Touching ceremony with the handoff of the trophy to Mrs. Butke. And I think Ann has a career as the next Michael Buffer. She wants to little <laughs> sidelight with her career at Tostitos. The Oklahoma State Cowboys, 12 and 1, 12 wins for the first time in a season ever, and they were winner in their first BCS bowl game. We'll be back with more of the Ford BCS post game show right after these messages. This post game report is brought to you by the Ford F-150. Available with the efficiency and power of EcoBoost. Welcome back to the Ford VCS Post Game Show. In Oklahoma State, a winner in overtime, 41 38 over the Stanford Cardinal. Mike Gundy during the trophy presentation talked about how a lot of people have paid the price and it was energy choice of words because obviously this rise in the Oklahoma State football program coincides with an amazing amount of money hundreds of millions of dollars pumped into Oklahoma State University by T Boone Pickens their top booster uh, hundreds of millions of dollars into the football program in particular and when you have better facilities you have better budgets you're going to be a better football program by and large. So that's a big part of their success too. The question tonight now is with the prospect perhaps of a split national championship. Do you think that Oklahoma State did enough to make that a possibility. I would say the answer to that is no. I, I thought you had two teams that were pretty evenly matched and and both teams had one loss coming into it and I thought that whoever was going to win this thing if they had a chance for the next level to be able to split that vote. They were going to have to absolutely dominate and and that did not happen here tonight. Not that there wasn't good football played here because there was but it was a dominant it was not a dominating performance team wise on either side of the ball. And obviously if LSU wins the BCS national championship game it's a move point If Alabama wins perhaps it's an issue but probably not because as you said neither team really dominated the other at any point here tonight. But what a game it was and Oklahoma State emerges victorious in their first ever BCS Bowl game 41 38 in overtime over Stanford. Thanks for watching the Ford BCS post game show. Coming up next at Sports Center, we'll have more from here in Glendale and they'll have coverage of the rest of today's bowl games. Our post game coverage also continues on ESPNU. For Matt Millen, Heather Cox, Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, our great crew, Sean McDonough saying so long from Glendale, Arizona. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Here's Sports Center.